microphones are broke? No, it's not. Well, I told you, just use the other one. The headphones aren't working right. Are you in the morning groaning and no, complaining about today? It feels like it's going to be one of those days. I was it? all happy till you came in. Right. At least I'm going now. Come here, I'll tell you, in all fairness, you're working now. Do you want these other headphones? Well, d- did you switch the headphones around? Get you away. Do you want these? I'll give you these when I go. Are they yours? No. Are they working in both ears? Yes. Yeah, no, they're these. They're, they're the. They're you, you want to give somebody else the broken ones, your guests, and you have the ones that's working. Yes, don't worry. It's fine. <laughs> anyway. Okay, what was I was going to say to you. Everything's fine. Ah, I was going to say to you, you were very quick to come back to me yesterday when I says, Daddy, I says, I'm getting all these calls from people saying, hello, this is the way it goes, right? They go, hello. Yes. And they're expecting me to say, oh, hello, thanks for calling me back. And they're going, hello. And I'm going, hello. And it says, um, I got a missed call. They say, I got a missed call from this number. And I'm saying, oh, I says, no, this has happened quite a bit. I haven't called. I don't know what's happening. So the scammers, right, the scammers clone the numbers. So randomly, so that if they're trying to scam someone, they they can just pick any Irish number, whatever it begins with, right? People are more likely to ring. I suspect your number has been cloned. It's ringing people for scams, right? But you're getting the return calls. Yeah, they're calling me back saying, I got a missed call from you. Exactly, and I says, no, yeah. I didn't call you. Yeah. And it's all over the place. I'm chatting to people down the country. Hey, what's the crack? Yeah, what's so the weather like down there? was definitely cloned. Yeah, so how do, what do I do about that? You just, it'll, uh, it'll Flip. pass. It'll pass. Mm. There's nothing you can do about it. Right. Because mm. it's not actually your number. It's just a skin over the top of the scan number. Right. Except you that's know, annoying. It's very annoying. It's very annoying indeed. But that's how they do it. So, but um, there's no way around it, Lee. I'm afraid you're shut. No, that's all right. But as long as they can't go into anything else. No, they're, it's just randomly picked your number. Right. Because so. I had about 10 calls. Do you know how I'm the greatest crack ever? I was going to say, knowing you, you've probably made 10 new friends. Ah, yeah, there's a couple now. <laughs> no, there's not, really. But just a bit of banter. But I know straight away, no, I can, so I can say now, my phone's cloned, so sorry. Yeah, it wasn't but me. you're in, no, it doesn't affect you other oh, than right, the okay. inconvenience. Well, I'm sure it's happening to other people. It has, too. definitely. I've spoken to them. All right, okay. For sure. I see you were good. You came back. You were on the money, Daddy. Do you want these headphones? I think, I think these are all right now. All right, keep okay. shaking your head. All right, <laughs> all right <laughs> Lee. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, so beware uh, if Lee calls you and you get a missed call. <laughs> right, okay, 9 to noon show. Let's get a news update now from Donna Marie uh, Doherty. Thanks, Greg. Good morning. Simon Harris is expected to become Ireland's youngest ever Taoiseach later today. He's likely to be the only nominee in the doll this morning, taking over from party colleague Leo Varadkar. In terms of his backing in the Donegal constituency, Minister Charlie McConnell and Deputy Joe McHugh will support his nomination, while Deputies Pierce Doherty, Podrick McLaughlin and Thomas Pringle will not. Sligo, Leitrim and South Donegal is split, with deputies Frank Fain and Mark McSharry set to vote yes, while independent deputy Marion Harkin will join deputy Martin Kenny in the no lobby. Gardaí in Donegal are appealing to the public to end the game of roulette that's taking place on our roads. They say following speed and drug detections in recent days, it's clear the safety of other road users is not being considered by many. With more, here's Tara Duggan. On Friday night, the Buncrana Roads Policing Unit detected a car travelling at 131 kilometres an hour in a 100 kilometre speed zone. The driver was stopped and arrested on suspicion of drink driving. They must now pay a €160 fine. They've received three penalty points and will face a possible court appearance. Meanwhile, just last night, the same Garda unit then caught a driver travelling at 134 kilometres an hour in a speed zone of 100 kilometres. Garda from Letterkenny Garda station were also in action last night as they arrested a driver on suspicion of drug driving after they tested positive for cocaine. Further tests are now awaited. Garda say the risk taking must stop and that it will also be too late to change your ways when a tragedy occurs. PSNI are appealing to identify two men who were driving a white van and assisted on the scene of a fatal collision in Oma on Tuesday the 5th of March. The crash involved a Scania lorry and a white BMW 320 on the Kerr Road Barra between quarter past and twenty past seven in the evening. The men in the white van are believed to have been travelling to Donegal after working in the Dungannon area. PSNI believe they may have information which can assist investigations. The Donegal branch of the Irish Hotels Federation has a new chair. Ashley Arnold, General Manager of Arnold's Hotel in Dunfanaghy, has been elected to the position, replacing Paul Diver from Ross Nyla. She previously worked as a chartered accountant and has acted as a consul- consultant for clients and the local enterprise office in Donegal, as well as a number of other private businesses. 
Looking now to weather, today will bring a good deal of dry weather with some sunny spells of sunshine and a few showers. Breezy with a moderate to fresh northwesterly wind which will ease later highest temperatures of 8 to 11 degrees. That's all for now. Back again at 10 o'clock. If you're not with Uno Energy, chances are you're paying more than you need to for your electricity. As Ireland's newest energy provider, we offer Ireland's cheapest electricity rate, saving our customers up to €500 Euro per year. So if you want to pay less for energy, simply pay a visit to unoenergy.ie and sign up for big savings with smaller bills. With Uno Energy, you just know. Uno Energy fixed discount rate EAB 1415 Euro. For T's and C's and rates, see unoenergy.ie. Supplier's pricing may change. And now, it's time for the talk of the Northwest, the 9 to Noon Show, with Greg Hughes on Highland Radio. Hello and a very good morning to you. It is five minutes, uh, or approaching five minutes past nine on this Tuesday, the 9th of April, 2024. How are you all keeping out there? I hope you're very well. Uh, I hope your Tuesday's going well for you uh, so far. Right, we're here to keep you company uh, over the next three hours. Loads of different features coming up on the show. We'll keep you across all the big news stories of the day, of course. Uh, coming up after 10, Community Guard information, where you hear the latest appeals and information from Angola Shia Khan first, that and so much more besides. So stick with us uh, throughout the course of uh, this morning. And we want to hear what you have to say. We were really busy on the lines yesterday. Greatly appreciate it. WhatsApps and texts to 0866 25,000 0866 25,000 uh, and you can send your WhatsApp voice notes to that number too. Don't be shy. 0866 25,000. If you want to give us a call, it's 07491 25,000. And from outside the Republic, uh, you add uh, 00353 and drop the first O and off you go there. Emails to comments at highlandradio.com. Every paper has pictures of either... Um, Leo Varadkar or Simon Harris. The picture on the front of the Irish Times is Leo Varadkar uh, waving to uh, the people who were stood outside the Irish and on. And uh, in the background, Michael D. Higgins uh, watches on from the doorstep. So he uh, gave his final salute, resigning. Uh, he handed in his resignation to President Michael D. Higgins at Irish and on yesterday evening. Well, Simon Harris no, uh, now um, has a job to do. He is to get elected as Taoiseach, which is a fait accompli, and then he has to, uh, of course, set up his new government. Saying that he had no regrets about leaving office, Leo Varadkar resigned as Taoiseach last night, clearing the way for new Fine Gael leader Simon Harris to succeed him today as Ireland's 16th and 37th youngest Taoiseach. The Dolls expected to vote for Mr Harris's nomination this morning, after which he will go to Arsenal Nukduran to be appointed to the role by President Michael D. Higgins. Mr. Harris will then return to government buildings as Taoiseach, where he will begin to uh, inform colleagues of his cabinet choices. A new cabinet will be announced to the Dáil at about 5 p.m. It is expected. Uh, though all ministers are deemed to have resigned when the Taoiseach resigns, Fianna Fáil and Green uh, ministers will be reappointed by Minister Harris uh, under the agreement between the parties. However, uh, Mr. Harris has choices to make about the Fine Gael ministers with TDs loyal to him eyeing promotions. You would hope it's a bad experience as much as loyalty. But anyway, with Mr. Fradkar's departure and the announcement by Minister uh, for Enterprise Simon Coveney that he would not seek reappointment to his post, Mr. Harris has at least two cabinet vacancies to fill. Uh, there's been intense speculation in Fine Gael last night over potential promotions and demotions at the Cabinet gathered in Farm Lee for a farewell dinner for Mr Varadkar. Sources were divided about the future of Minister for Justice Helen McEntee, who has lobbied strongly to keep her job. What do you think? Uh, should Helen McEntee keep her job? There are certain areas uh, that people believe that she's fallen down on. There are other areas where, uh, I think particularly in, in, in uh, uh, violence towards women, uh, domestic violence and others. That progress may not have been made under uh, under someone else's stewardship. Uh, but what do you think of her performance as Minister for Justice? Should she keep her job? I suspect she will. Uh, several Fine Gael TDs who spoke to the Irish Times last night said they expected the two key promotions would be Peter Burke to the Department of Enterprise and Hildegard Nocton to Mr Harris's former role as Minister for Higher and Further Education. But others suggested that Limerick TD Patrick O'Donovan would be uh, promoted. I'm sure they all know at this stage and we'll find out later. 
Uh, the Pope's uh, comments, most recent comments, are being uh, carried extensively in the papers, including the Irish Independent. Uh, the Vatican has declared gender-affirming surgery and surrogacy as grave threats to human dignity, putting them on a par with abortion and euthanasia as practices that violate God's plan for human life. The Vatican's Doctrine Office issued Infinite Dignity, a 20-page declaration that has been in the works for five years. After substantial revision in recent months, it was approved on March 25th by Pope Francis, who ordained its publication. Now, I mean, gender-affirming surgery is a very divisive uh, issue. I, And this is my ignorance, and it's not something I've thought greatly on, uh, surrogacy, uh, I didn't realise that would be sort of chucked in there with some of the other concerns that the Popes have, uh, the Pope has. I mean, do you agree that surrogacy is uh, violating God's plan for human life? Or have thoughts about giving life, is it not? But as I say, I haven't really thought, thought it through, but um, obviously the Pope uh, keen to make his views knows, known on this. In its most eagerly anticipated section, the Vatican repeated its rejection of gender theory or the idea that one's gender could be changed. It said God created man and woman as biologically different separate beings and said they must not tinker with that plan or try to make God one's God or make oneself God. It follows uh, that any sex change intervention as a rule risks threatening the unique dignity the person has received from the movement at uh, the moment of uh, conception. So speaking out really quite uh, um, clearly on transgender surgery and also, as I say, uh, surrogacy. Any views on that? 086 60 25,000. Um, I don't think we saw much of the eclipse yesterday, uh, did we? But it was a sight for some sore eyes as millions did see the eclipse. A rare total solar eclipse yesterday turned day into night which happens at night time often anyway, but anyway, uh, turned day into night for millions across Mexico, the US and Canada. Lucky viewers watched as the moon blocked the sun, leaving only the outer atmosphere uh, visible. In some areas, uh, totality, where the moon fully covers the sun, lasted for as long as 4 minutes 28 seconds. In Ireland, dozens of spectators gathered on the Sky Road in County Galway to witness the eclipse shortly after 8pm. Clouds parted to reveal the rare event. Um, didn't see anything uh, where I was. I don't know if you did, where you were. It was just pretty cloudy and I didn't even really notice it getting dark or what have you. But anyway, the thing I found uh, quite interesting and somewhat worrying too is that very shortly after the eclipse in the United States, there's Google Analytics, Google Analytics so you can actually check what people are Googling um, and you can check the patterns in what they're Googling. And since the solar eclipse and the hours after it, there was a massive spike across the world in internet search results for why do my eyes hurt and my eyes hurt? Uh, they peaked far and above where they've ever been since Google was invented. So despite people being warned not to look up, uh, people obviously did and then found themselves with sore eyes. Okay. Now, on to the Irish Daily Star, Sinn Féin, which already has by far the biggest online presence of all political parties, spent more in social media ads than all others combined so far this year. The latest report from Mully Communications analysed the social media ad spend of political parties and found Sinn Féin has more social media reach than all other parties combined. Now, I'm not sure if they can determine if that's paid or not. But anyway, the latest report shows Sinn Féin, led by Mary Lou Macdonald, is spending more than double on social media ads at €44,000, while Fine Gael spends uh, 8450 Fianna Fáil spent 7000 Labour spent 2450 But I don't recall seeing a Sinn Féin ad. I definitely see a lot of Fine Gael ads. Um, not so much Fianna Fáil, but the most ads I would see are Fine Gael ads, but they seem to spend much less than uh, Sinn Féin. I mean, there's an organic sort of presence online as well that you don't have to pay for. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says a date has been set for his ground invasion of Rafah. This is the Irish Daily Mirror. Global alarm has been raised by the prospect of an offensive, including from Israeli's top ally, the US, which has demanded to see a credible plan to protect civilians currently. 1.4 million Palestinians are there, 6,000 of them children. Israel's insisted it has a plan to protect the civilians. It is purchasing 40,000 tents to prepare for the evacuation. Um, 
An Israeli official said, speaking on condition of anonymity because they were not authorised to talk to the media. In a statement yesterday, Mr Netanyahu said the RAFA operation is essential for a victory. It will happen. There is a date, he added, without elaborating. And he had to say that because under pressure, uh, and for one reason or another, he did um, pull significant numbers of troops out of um, southern Gaza. He was compelled, it seems, by the US to open up um, aid routes and... Presumably, uh, he he did he, he was getting a bit of pressure for looking weak, and that's why he's reiterated what will be nothing short of an absolute disaster to go into uh, Rafa. And uh, finally, um, the Irish uh, Sun this morning: the jury in the Stardust inquest resumed yesterday following a question regarding a 49th victim of the tragedy. 48 people died in the tragic nightclub blaze in Artane, Dublin, on Valentine's Day in 1981. But yesterday, on the fourth day of deliberations by the jury, the coroner addressed a query about one victim who had been in the early stages of pregnancy. Dr Myra Cullen Hain uh, advised that jurors can only make their determination in relation to the 48 people who lost their lives in the incident at uh, these fresh inquests into the deaths began last April and just gives you a sense of the uh, the difficult task uh, facing those uh, jurors. OK, that was a run through uh, the poop, uh, the newspapers. 086 60 25,000 is our WhatsApp and text number. We'll be back with more after these. Daily newspapers are courtesy of Kelly Centra and Diner Mountaintop Letter Kenny, winner of Best Family Dining at the Highland Radio Hospitality Awards. The Nine Till Noon Show is brought to you by Letter Kenny Credit Union with monster loans available up to sixty thousand euro for all occasions. Visit LetterKennyCU.ie. Harkins have been providing customers with quality fireplaces, stoves and electric fires for over 30 years. And now you can experience the elegance of luxurious worktop from Harkins. Their experienced craftsmen can fabricate marble, quartz or granite worktops to your specification. So, if you're planning a new kitchen or bathroom or upgrading your existing one, Harkin Fireplaces can provide a quote for your quartz, marble or granite worktop. Visit their showroom in Ballybogan Lifford or call 914-1109 or visit them online at harkinfireplaces.ie. Tee off your Masters Week with unbeatable savings at McGurk's Golf Letter Kenny. From the 8th of April to the 15th of April, swing by our store and score big. For every €100 Euro spent, you'll receive a €10 Euro McGurk's Golf voucher. Take advantage of this limited offer during Masters Week. Visit McGurk's Golf located at Letter Kenny Retail Park, your go to destination for top quality golf equipment and at unbelievable prices. The life of a Charlie's chip is never dull. Once they're selected, they're off to Charlie's, where they lose that jacket, have a nice wash, and get into shape. Before going out, there's always a few nerves, totally unnecessary, because, let's face it, they always go down well. Enjoy Charlie's chips to sit in or take away daily from 12 to 8 at Pierce Road Letterkenny. When the hunger hits, pull into Charlie's. Foy & Company, Bally Buffet and Letterkenny are the largest stockists of interior and exterior paint in the Northwest. If you're planning a painting project and need help picking the right colour and brand of paint for your home or commercial premises, call in and ask our qualified paint colour consultants, interior designers and interior stylists. The team at Foy & Company, Bally Buffet and Letterkenny will be delighted to help. Only three days left until the big home makeover draw in association with Foy & Company. If you're in, you could completely transform your home with a €10,000 home makeover plus €5,000 in cash, all in association with Foy & Company. Check out highlandradio.com to purchase your tickets and we could be calling you this Friday afternoon on Around the Northwest. Entries close at midday on Friday the 12th of April. Now, we are joined on the programme by uh, Fine Gael MEP Maria Walsh. Good morning, Maria. Thank you very much for your time today. Good morning. Thanks for having us on. No, it's good to have you on the programme. And we're going to talk about a very serious matter. So what I might do beforehand is ask you just about the process that's been happening over the next, uh, the last wee while. Um, Leo Varadkar has uh, gone since I last spoke to you. Simon Harris mm. is in. How do you think that uh, leaves your party? 
I think it leaves uh, us uh, very strong. Um, you know, uh, the, the current Taoiseach, uh, well, well, technically he resigned as of as of yesterday with uh, with President Higgins, but um, you know, as he shared, and everybody listening to you had heard him on the news and since just sharing, he he was um, ready to hand over the reins, and Minister Simon Harris stepped up, and uh, we had a very uh, busy two weeks, um, a very successful Ardesh in the University of Galway on Saturday where uh, Minister Harris laid out his his plan um, and highlighted a number of key priorities and we'll see what the next couple of hours look like in terms of his appointment um, for ministers and minister of states. Do you Sadly, have any Greg, co- I do not have inside information before <laughs> you okay. ask. I think we it all know. certainly is not me. <laughs> I think we all know anyway. Do you have any concerns as to where the party might go as it scrambles to sort of become more relevant to, you know, uh, Ireland over the next few months? I'm thinking two particular areas such as, as, as immigration. I think our relevance uh, is well. I, I listen. I I don't think that's to be questioned. But I know many of your listeners uh, will question that on uh, as councillors and and myself as as an MEP uh, will be knocking on doors and have been knocking on doors up until the elections on June seventh uh, and beyond. Um, uh, Minister Harris is very much stressed that he's. Um, hoping to uh, push out this government until the last possible time. So given everybody time, given him time specifically to work on key issues. Um, I know in just in listening to news today and in the last couple of days, um, obviously law and order, the, 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 the support and the process of our migration system. Uh, and as listen, as a pro-European, we, uh, you know, I, I believe we we must adhere to uh, our international protection standards. Um, but I understand the frustrations also people are showing in communities. Um, and just this week, actually, this evening, I'll fly fly to to Brussels to the Parliament because we vote on the EU migration pack, um, which will be a firm and and fair process working with all member states, which is what needs to happen, um, so that people. Uh, they're not applications. They're they're people fleeing uh, various countries that need the the supports that they do. But we need to make sure that mm. we have that 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 communication style uh, in place for our communities to understand what's going on too. So I I take that fully on board. But uh, from his side, uh, you're going to hear the have you had the the word energy, um, the word re-energize in sense of. Uh, the Ardesh, if anything to go by, we will be. We have been hitting the ground running, um, and uh, we'll be putting ourselves local and uh, MEPs to to the people on June seventh, and and hopefully long after that, the the general. Um, indeed. Now, obviously, you're contesting um, the uh, European elections, and there is concern that female MEPs, particularly but not exclusively, I don't think. Uh, may have to he- heed a warning of the threat of explicit deepfake images being used against them in future elections. And, and just for those who, who may not be aware, this could be a video. Uh, this could be an image. This could be a video. Uh, technology is advanced to the point where the bla- the the lines of of what's real and what isn't real have been completely uh, blurred, and that it's very possible now and very doable and not just by tech experts but anyone that you could take my face and place it on somebody else's body and it can be moving and speaking and you would have to dig a bit deep to to try and ascertain if it's if it's actually real or not and it is a real concern uh maria what has uh, been talked about in in relation to this it is. This was uh, this was an issue, and a serious issue, uh, and and really delighted you're you're giving us time to discuss it because um, an organisation called EU Disinfo Lab, uh, which is um, a, a, an organisation that works with research academics, political representat- representatives, media outlets uh, right across the EU, and is constantly updating uh, certain threats that are impacting um, uh, voter participation. Uh, And one that was flagged to me was the rise and the threat of deep fakes. And to your point, uh, it is not just uh, images, it's also audio, it's video. uh, And sadly, we're seeing the rise. Now, for those listening might remember um, uh, Pope Francis I think it was March of last year, came out with this, uh, it was a deep fake image that went, did the rounds, actually went viral of him wearing this white puffer jacket, looking very sleek and fit. Uh, and it and it took a couple of hours for people to stress out the fact that this was a deep fake. You have that as 
quite humorous um, uh, and maybe brought up his street cred a little bit. And then on the other serious point, though, you have um, a reported audio file that was created using deep ta- deep fake technology of President Barack, or, sorry, President Joe Biden that went out to voters. Um, and he's a very iconic voice. So no doubt if I was a voter uh, receiving this, I think, oh, I just received an audio file and a, a voice message um, from, from the president uh, encouraging me to vote. However, there was a number of disinfo and misinfo points within that audio file. So you have extremes. Where, fear, where I fear for this, and I guess this is my, my flag uh, to those listening, it is sadly you will potentially see a number of deep fake uh, files, videos, images over the course of many elections. But as we have local and Europeans upcoming, it has been flagged to me by this organization, EU Disinfo, um, that uh, female candidates, and to your point actually at the start, males too, um, uh, could be subject to this. And that could be uh, an image of me or video of me going out um, in in fake contact, but looks very real and uh, conducting either sexual or misconduct um, forms. The and, problem is uh, too, and, and that discredits yeah, that discredits me and my work. Of yeah. course, the problem too with this is because it could be you know it, it could be a WhatsApp image or it could be framed as if it were some sort of a not WhatsApp image like a voice note or something as you mentioned, mm-hmm. or it could be framed as a an image that was sent to someone you know and then it was leaked. The issue, the problem is though that when this happens and it's inevitable, it's keeping the lid on it. And we've seen in the past, you know, uh, where people have... I mean, your your colleague, for an example, uh, Luke Ming Flanagan, uh, the hacking of his Twitter account, right? Not everyone knows that he was hacked still to this day. Do you know what I mean? That's sort of an example I'm, I'm trying to give here. So in other words... The more you explain, oh, that's not me. That's uh, that's AI generated. It. Uh, oh, she would say that, wouldn't she? Or he would say that. And that's the problem in this day and age is that once it happens, there is always a damage to it, beyond obviously the terrible violation, the personal violation. And it's really hard to know how to to, to sort of get around that. Yeah, and sadly, to your point, uh, once it's out there, if it's five minutes or five hours, it, 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 the time frame often is irrelevant because uh, very difficult to to renege or roll back on uh, when when something is fake. And then, uh, as you shared, and rightly so, you're trying to get out to as many people to say this isn't true, um, and and people have to be left to their own devices to to believe it or not. Um, you know, it's a sad state of humanity, actually, in, in one side, um, but I think that might be a longer and greater debate, Greg. But from this side, uh, as an EU legislator, we have the Digital Service Act, we have the recent AI Act. They have pieces of legislation that uh, will hold those that are, are caught accountable, but we're looking at, sadly, uh, a little bit of, uh, too long in the tooth to make that happen. I know Meta. Um, have been challenged and have agreed to uh, put a tagline on uh, on their Instagram and Facebook post saying made by AI or generated by AI, which helps us, uh, you and I as users, to understand what's real and what's not. Um, but I can only stress to, to those, and I think this is why this conversation is so relevant, is to continue to stay informed. This is a public awareness piece. Um, verify sources. Uh, you know, challenge the fact that perhaps before you spread or share um, that you just make sure and check the credibility of such and then res- report any suspected deep fakes. Um, and, and, you know, I think we have to be really conscious of uh, other reports that tell me constantly in, in my work in, in the European Parliament that on average three to four, three to four images uh, on the go are constantly fake. So you can imagine me and you open up our phone and the amount the amount of time, I, I don't know about you, I, I sometimes live on my phone, I'm seeing a lot of content. So how much of that is fake and how much of that is real? Um, I, I said it to you before, as an Irish MEP, we also have due diligence, the fact that we house a number of the social media platform companies in this country yeah, but they, they, that they, they, service like, the think, EU. You so know, I think Meta, Go- Meta Google will work with, with governments. I think the problem is, is X really in particularly in that I'm, I'm even to the point now whereby they're in full on dispute with brazil over um censorship and what have you i don't believe in censorship and maybe they're taking stand and that's fine but the point is is then 
you know, they can be slow to act in other um, jurisdictions as well. You know, stuff gets removed quite quickly from the other platforms, but X, mm -hmm. seemingly, it's just a, a bit of a, a law unto itself. It is, it is, and I have no counter-argument because I wholeheartedly agree with you. Um, however, we have to move and work on some shape or form particularly with the with all platforms but if if x uh and the main man himself uh is not moving on 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 stuff that doesn't mean we need to uh renege or, or be slow on the likes of meta and other platforms um uh not working with that that tagline of made with the eye and ultimately pulling content down fast enough i i spoke to someone who's a data analyst analyst uh with meta um, a couple of weeks ago, actually with YouTube specifically, I should say, a couple of weeks ago. And I was trying to just understand the f workflow. She goes, we are online 24 hours a day, seven days a week, pulling content down. Um, the speed of which it's going up, inciting violence and fear. She goes, I work in that area that is constantly pulling down. At the time, she was um, working on the, the Moscow um, demonstrations and, and protests uh, and the violence that, that inc incurred from that. So there, there are people working in this field. It's just either we don't have enough of it, we don't have uh, a fair or judicial system to pull this content down fast enough, or those, dare I say, I, I, I really believe if you're using a social media platform, we should treat it like we treat Air, Airbnb and Revolut, for example, that you have to have an identification uh, linked to your account that's kept safe. Uh, and, and is protected, uh, but that you're held accountable should you uh, participate in anything that is uh, illegal yeah, and okay. creating an insight and fear and, fear and harm. All right, listen, thanks very much uh, for that. Take care of yourself. Maria Walsh, Fine Gael, MEP, uh, also contestant, of course, the um, upcoming EU elections, but the, 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 the AI imagery now is so detailed, what it can create from scratch, let alone switch one person's face to another person's body is going to be a real difficulty and yes at the moment it's uh for you know people in the public eye but how long is it before this technology is easily accessible and it could be used around schools and stuff you know so it is something we all need to keep an eye on even if you're not too in some people might go well politicians what do you expect blah 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 but when it affects our children as well too and it will whereby it could appear that your daughter or your son did something that they didn't do it would we can imagine the negative impact it might have on um their well-being a caller says helen mcintee must stay her reform work on the unfit for purpose family courts and zero tolerance of all abuse by anyone including parental uh, alienation has been world leading and that's the point i was trying to make that of course some people might have some issues with some of the stuff she does but then uh, do you want to throw the baby out with the bathwater or maybe you do would you ask anyone who can vote for jason mccall tonight please thank you jason's a lovely local lad and is a great entertainer I think that's on TG Kahar. Is it's not a program I've ever watched, if I'm completely honest with you. Uh, right, let's take a quick break. We still have loads of comments from yesterday too, by the way, to catch up on. So if you did message the show yesterday, your message certainly hasn't been ignored and hopefully we'll get to it uh, as we mix it with today's comments over the course of the next two and a half hours. Watch the show live now on YouTube, Facebook and at highlandradio.com. The 9 till noon show with Letterkenny Credit Union. Now offering mortgages from 40,000 to 600,000 euro with no hidden fees or transaction charges. Letter Kenny Credit Union 9102127. I'm Looking for real choice? Leave diesel behind and make the move to Toyota Hybrid Electric at Kelly's Toyota Letter Kenny and Mount Charles. World leading hybrid electric technology, lower emissions driving, with the widest choice of hybrid electric models from Ireland's best selling car brand. With flexible payment options available, make the move today at Kelly's Toyota Letter Kenny and Mount Charles. Toyota, built for a better world. Join Inishon Co-op for their massive annual home build show at Inishon Gateway Hotel, Boncrana on Saturday, April 13th from 11 to 5pm. Meet the suppliers for expert advice on solar energy, heating, interior design, flooring, paint, insulation, plumbing and all your home build needs. Expert speakers and MICA supports available on the day from Inishon Development Partnership. Don't miss Inishon Co-op home build event Saturday, April 13th, Inishon Gateway Hotel. See Facebook for details.
The CFC Interior Stock Disposal Sale is now on. Due to renovations, an incredible £1.5 million worth of stock must go. Don't miss our highest ever discount on selected ranges across all departments. The Stock Disposal Sale at CFC Interiors Derry, Cookstown and Abbey Centre. Sale now on. Well, Grace, how are you today? I'm good. I've just been down to the Made to Measure Fireplaces showroom in Chrysler. They have an incredible selection of over 40 colours for kitchen worktops. And guess what? For a limited time, they're offering a 40% discount on any electric fire when you purchase a worktop there. 40%? That's an amazing deal, Grace. Absolutely. And trust me, if the discount alone doesn't sway you, their huge selection of fireplaces, stoves, wood pellet burners, beams and stone cladding certainly will. Contact Made to Measure Fireplaces places Krishla on 0749138365 on Facebook, Instagram and on mtmfireplaces.ie a caller says, I remember the eclipse happening in the UK in the late 90s. The beautiful, ta- the beautiful day turned very dark, turned windy, and the birds disappeared. It was brilliant. Also, the Red Top newspapers were giving out free glasses to view the eclipse as people were warned the damage it could do to their eyes. I don't think I would be trusting... Uh, cheap glasses from a red top to protect my eyes, to be honest with you. Um, but I do remember uh, the time that you're talking of. Minister- Ministerial picks what has experience or abilities got to do with it. Remember, Mr. Faradkar selected on the basis of social media activity, which is, of course, Simon Harris, primary, possibly only skilled. Another caller says, I know the name of a senior guard that deals in drugs. OK, well, you should get on to the guards and tell them that. Uh, I, I kind of that one slipped out. I should have checked that one before I read it out. But anyway, um, Terman Bingo is raising funds for Relay for Life this Friday, and the scammers are targeting it by messaging people, telling them they've won a prize. How low can these people go? Indeed, I saw some of those screenshots that were shared with me, and uh, they go as low as uh, a snake's belly, uh, it would seem. Uh, 0866025000 WhatsApps and texts uh, to that number. Uh, Darren on Facebook. Greg, how about getting someone from the so-called far right on? Because you've nothing but far left agitators on. Just because Maria is a woman, whatever that is these days, doesn't give her a pass. I, I mean, Darren, listen, there's people from all political uh, backgrounds on the show, left-leaning, right-leaning. I don't do the far left, far right stuff, to be honest with you. Uh, but there are definitely people that come on this programme that would have uh, would be very far apart from Maria Walsh in her points of view as well. All views are are aired uh, for the most part on this show, providing they don't, uh, you know, they're not illegal or what have you. Uh, Gareth on Facebook, Greg, can you ask Maria why her party is ignoring DCB homeowners, defective clock bo- uh, block homeowners? Uh, I will. Um, we're getting close to the European elections now and there are other people uh, in the race as well and those issues will all be discussed as part of uh, conversations we'll be having uh, with people, uh, by the way, to get people's stance on certain issues, uh, the roundtable debates, as uh, they might say. Right, Andy Harkins, a car enthusiast and member of uh, Donegal-based Car Club 074. Good morning to you, I love it, 074. Hi, Andy, how are you getting on? Morning, how are you? Good, good, good. We were talking yesterday, uh, we were listening from a parent and there was no real anti, there was no anti car modding uh, sentiment on the show yesterday from our listeners but uh, we did have a couple of parents whose uh, young people in their lives were modding their cars, struggling to get, uh, struggling to get car insurance. Is that an issue that you find amongst members of the 074 uh, Car Club, Andy, that, you know... Well, tell us, actually, before we do, talk to me a little bit about uh, car modification, that scene, and I suppose the difference between it and so-called boy-girl racers. Yeah, well, like, for for us, it's not really... Um, like it's, it's, it's 24-7. I mean, I know for myself, like, if I didn't have... If I didn't have cars, it's what I grew up with. Um, so I don't really know anything else. I'm not really into any sort of like GAA or rugby or football or nothing like that. So it's kind of the main hobby that I have got going on in my life between it and motorbikes. Um, I don't think I don't think I have any other interests outside of that. So like we kind of, I don't really want to jump on anybody's anybody's back about it. But like when it comes to I suppose we look at it like from the side that we're kind of more customizers. 
than what you would call the term boy racers. Yeah. I wouldn't be a massive fan of that term anyway, but we're more customizers, is what I would call it. Um, yeah, and, and just for the general public, would you say, you know, maybe some of the cars you might see in shows like Fast and Furious, that kind of stuff, uh, you know, kitted mm-hmm. out road cars? Yeah. Well, that, that, I'm standing here looking at my own car. We've just returned from a, a show with our club in um, Lisburn there at the weekend called Dubshed. They've uh, they've opened up a section now for Japanese cars because that's what our club kind of mainly deals with, and uh, like that's 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 what we do. We we build we design these cars ourselves and we we build them. And even in my own looking at my own car here, like the kit that's on my car is actually handmade from from scratch. Like it's not just you know bought parts and mm. glued onto a car and away I go. Like this is something that I designed from scratch and between me and other people in the club we've actually made this stuff ourselves and and the cars look absolutely uh, unbelievable there's absolutely no doubt about that uh, and and also too I've noted and I think I've read out a couple of announcements about it cars and coffee um is is an event that you yeah. run yeah um yeah, we've actually, like, kind of over the last couple of years, we've kind of built ourselves a, a fairly good name kind of throughout the country for, like, the the quality of our cars specifically. And, like, we've, like, a couple of our cars are actually show one in cars at the minute. And so we thought, like, we would like to kind of get under the, the realm of running a show up this kind of neck of the woods because it doesn't really be... If, if you want to go to a big show, we have to go the whole way they the likes of Belfast, the likes of Do- like Mondello and Kildare and stuff. So we thought we'd run a show and Snugborough have been very kind of welcoming to, you know, us kind of running shows. So we thought we would try and set up our first show. And actually two of the boys in our club have actually just moved out of their houses in their Melton because they're being set to be demolished with Mika. So... Mm. Uh, and my own parents' house is the same, so we decided, like, I mean, like, there isn't a bigger problem in Donegal at the minute, so why not, like, try our, like, use use our influence from our side of things and try and raise as much money as we can. So we're going to run that show now on the 5th of May. Brilliant, it's exciting. And that's going to be out, uh, where 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 is that going to be located? Um, Snugborough, okay, down brilliant. in uh, Bonaguee, down Lair Kelly. Plenty of yeah, space it's, uh, there. Sunday, the, the fifth. Yeah, we actually, well, just from speaking from with the owners of Snugborough, we have kind of to start off space for 90 cars. Mm. Wow, okay. And it'll draw a huge so crowd. A, yeah, well, that's, that's it. Like, well, weather dependent, as we all know, up here is kind of a big thing, but. Yeah, like we've, I've been personally there a couple of them there before. Um, the crowds, like it's a Sunday morning thing, and like there's there's not much else to be doing on a Sunday morning, so why not come out and have a nose around some cars? So basically, we're trying to get cars that you know you wouldn't really ever ever really see in the roads. So trying to get um, some kind of high end stuff and some really like one off kind of bulk cars just for. I know when I was when I was a kid, I like to like to go to car shows and see things that like you just do not see or you would see on posters on your wall. Mm. Now, yesterday, someone, I, I, you know, comments perhaps grouped uh, car enthusiasts with boy racers, and I think someone said yesterday that all modified cars should be banned outright. Now. I mean, obviously, that's going to be tough for you guys to hear because he's put so much time, love, and money into the vehicles. Uh, you know, you aren't mm-hmm. your boy racers in inverted commas, and that's why I thought it important to chat to you as well, Andy, to give all sides to this. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, it must be frustrating, yeah. is it, when you hear comments like that? I don't, you know, it really is because I feel like we're completely misunderstood. Um, as I said, like I, I, if I didn't have cars and motorbikes and stuff, like, and in and a, and a way, it's kind of like, you know, we have a bad day. We come home, we go to the garage, we start working on cars. Just, you know, it's kind of like a, a therapy for us in a kind of weird way. It's just something to think about and take our heads away. And then just to be like, I, I, I know there's people out there um, on on the roads that are doing like crazy stupid things and. To be honest, I see, like, driving to work in Lerkenny every day, I see 
people in completely normal road cars doing stupid things as well, like putting on makeup or taking phone calls or, you know. But for us to be lumped into a category that everybody has a real hatred for just kind of doesn't really seem to be fair because, I mean, we we this is everything we do. Yeah. And we put a lot of money, a lot of thought, you know, and a lot of effort into it. And just to be kind of, just like, I, I did actually hear when I was driving home from work on the repeat of your show last night that somebody says everything should be banned. Well, like, what about other stuff that people like? Who just ban everything because it might be, like, mildly annoying to somebody? Yeah, and as you, say too, uh, as you say too, you know, if you were to dig down into it and and, and the cause of, of, of collisions and what have you, uh, you know, would, would people like you who love your cars as much as you do uh, be feature highly in those figures? Probably not, I would suggest, uh, at all, at all. Andy, this whole conversation started, though, from a mother whose son probably is like you or, or, or like you used to be, loves the car, not interested mm -hmm. in... in, in you know, um, spending, wasting the money on drink or whatever, puts it all into the car, went to the car, uh, went to insurance companies because it's modified, um, you know, can't get insurance. Is that a, a, a problem for your members, your colleagues? Actually, just, it's funny you say that because one of one of the boys is just after purchasing a car and it's, it's a really, it's a small car. It's not, it's like, a 660 cc engine so it's not even it's like a half of a liter engine mm. it came in from japan it's a kind of quirky wee small car and just like they don't even the insurance companies don't even try to find out anything about it they wouldn't even risk assess that individual car they just go oh japanese no nope. so he's actually stuck now with a car that he i think, he, I think he's 27 years old and he's stuck now with a car that he might just have to have an ornament in the garden because nobody will even consider him. Yeah, or tow it, tow it to car parks or shows on a trailer. It's completely useless to him that's as a, it, a road vehicle. On, that's it. Like, and, you know, we don't exactly have fortunes of money and all the money we do have, we do invest into the cars. Mm. And to be told then that you're not even allowed to take it out. Is, you know, I, I, there's just a funny attitude because, like, for us to be such a a motorsport driven country and then people like us come to build these cars and want to take them out and show them off then mm. we're you know they don't nobody wants to see us and we get all lumped in with this really bad name yeah caller says can i just say off the bat of car modifying i drive a modified lexus uh is 200 and i must say the attitude towards young people enjoying their cars is crazy people look down their nose at us which i suppose is what maybe you might feel some listeners were doing yesterday, looking down their nose at car enthusiasts. Let's just call it as it is. It must have felt like that. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Because, like, even say there at Rally Weekend, like, we would come in and as a group, we all kind of meet up in a certain area just in the middle of the town. But once we get our cars parked and kind of on display, for want of a better term, we don't we don't move. Like, it's not us that's in the traffic wrecking the place and doing burnouts and stuff. Like, so... That's just from our side of our club. We're just there to display for people that are walking around to see, you know, and, have, and then to be to to be, get to the Monday. And I always enjoy the Monday, uh, listening to Highland after it, just to to hear everybody complaining. Well, but, now you know we're all tired. In fairness, with Andy. Breath. In fairness, Andy. In the last couple of years, hopefully you were listening and realised that it was a more balanced conversation. Because, you know, and I've said it on this program, like I'm tired of the, you know, not putting facilities on for people to be able to enjoy their cars and then complaining if they're driving around, you know, shutting everything off so they have no access. You know, I've been calling for years that, you know, that part of it should be embraced and, and people should have spaces to yeah. enjoy and not be seen as a blight. But I take your point, but I, I have tried very yeah. hard in the last couple of years post-rally to try and not do the usual, you know. Um, yeah, no, because and, and, and I don't understand that, and I do hear like I'd say the likes of the, the the yards that are getting opened up now, the likes of ferries and the and out at the uh, carton centre. I mean, that's great because mm. that gets the boys off the road. They can go on there and hash about all their night, and they're happy, and you know that kind of takes it out of them. Like more availability, and even if like you know the the, the politicians want to listen, like try and find somewhere that this can happen. I mean, 
where's the nearest racetrack? You have to go way to the, the far end of the north yeah. or way, way down the hill there. Like what we, are you we driving? We don't really have any facilities up here. What are you driving? Uh, what car are you looking at there? Uh, it's a 1999 Subaru Impreza. Uh, what colour? Uh, it's a kind of custom, it's like an orange, like a copper orange colour. Lovely, that's the, the one color we, uh, that's one on, on with the, ourselves. Alright, that's on the zero four. That's on the zero seven four Facebook page, isn't it? It's lovely, lovely looking car. Yep, thank you very much. Yep, right, that's okay. my, my own car and... Uh, you must have arms on you like Arnold Schwarzenegger polishing that thing. Um, if people can go on to Facebook. <laughs> people go on to Facebook, check out 074, zero word, seven uh, number, four word, and uh, see the work that they're doing yeah. and get more information on the Cars and Coffee event that's coming up. Uh, and listen, thanks for coming yeah. on and um, sort of, uh, I suppose, striking a balance, which is what we look for here in the show. Take care, Andy. Happy travels. Safe yeah. travels. All right, thank you. Andy Harkin, car enthusiast, a member of the Donegal-based Car Club 047. Greg with the tow bar. Okay, I wish I'd never mentioned me tow bar now. It was so long ago as well. Seriously, UK caters for these people. We seem to tarnish them all. The UK have loads of meat spots. Check these out. Ace Cafe London, uh, Caffeine and Machine Workshire, Jack's Hill Cafe, Northampton, the Old Can Cafe, West Yorkshire. That comes in from my old friend Oshin, who's of the view that Caroline does everything. Well, Oshin, you were right. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, maybe we do need to change our attitude because I was driving, as I've mentioned, did I mention the show yesterday down to Dublin? I think there must have been um, a rallying event in... Where did I see it? Oh, I can't remember. But the place was packed with cars and families uh, go, uh, that had parked on the main road to... Was it Monaghan? On the main road to go and see, uh, obviously, stages of the rally on the back roads. I mean, it's huge in this country, yet we have this massive uh, rally culture... And then we have this sort of attitude towards um, people who, who drive modified vehicles. It doesn't, it doesn't actually make an awful lot of sense. Right, OK, we are going to speak, uh, be speaking to Penny after this short break. The 9 Till Noon Show is brought to you by Letterkenny Credit Union. Offering low-rate car loans with fast approval. Apply online at letterkennycu.ie or in office today. I've been surfing all morning at FlemingLTD.com. To find out about Fleming doors, Fleming steel and Fleming coatings and their full range of products. So come surfing with me at FlemingLTD.com. Fleming, 91 48 234. The Salterra solution to driving anytime, anywhere is a generous 465 kilometre range and an always on, all wheel drive system. The Salterra solution to safety on the road is Subaru Safety Sense, a standard. The Salterra solution is to give you the power with a starting price of only €44,995. Test drive the all-electric Subaru Salterra and read full T's and C's at Subaru.ie. Gareth here from TFS and Letterkenny. We are now taking bookings for the busy spring summer period. If you are a business or homeowner anywhere in the northwest, let us take care of your painting, power washing and landscaping. Also, facility management, cleaning and utility needs. Call us today on 9177660 or email accounts at tfsireland.ie. Highland Radio Weather Updates brought to you by McElhenney's. With over 50 years of serving the community in Donegal, McElhenney's is proud to be part of every moment, big and small. Support local, shop McElhenney's Bally Buffet. So today we'll bring a good deal of dry weather with some sunny spells, uh, some spells of sunshine, a few showers, breezy with moderate to fresh northwesterly wind, which will ease later highs, temperatures of 8 to 11 degrees. There is actually more to that tow bar story that uh, I didn't reveal yesterday, if I'm actually honest with you in that I put the tow bar... <laughs> I didn't put the tow bar in my car. I put the tow bar in Ashleen's car because I didn't want to be towing in my car. But anyway, <laughs> that's the truth. Right, OK. Uh, Penny, good morning to you. Hello, Craig. How are you? I'm good. Now, you've uh, a, a story of insurance and dealing with an insurance company. What was the situation? I do, Greg. Well... My car is in need of some repair, so um, my father offered to lend me his car for a week or so until it's repaired, you know. Um, 
I have two young children, and I'm just staying at home with my, with my youngest, um, I'm a hairdresser. Um, so we rang his insurance company, and they were going through the questions. Um, 13 years, full license, no claims, and 32 years old. That was grand, everything was perfect, and asked what was my occupation. And the style replied, well, she's at the home, at home at the minute with her young child. Mm-hmm. Oh, and they just cut him completely down and says, no, sorry, we can't insure. And the father was, you know, why, why was that? And they said, I need to be in full-time employment. Wow, okay. So it's just a bit bewildering, you know, um, to come back. It <laughs> takes more, it takes a lot to um, kind of shock him, you know, and it shocked me. Uh, I'm still ring back the insurance today and query them more on it. Mm-hmm. I'm actually on. I am actually insured. I have a policy. What's the same company as well as as he's on? It's just um, it's kind of shocking, you know. Uh, why would you be refuse insurance because you're at home? your young child yeah can does your but sorry to penny uh this is not the point that you're uh making but if you're a policy holder and his car is insured are you not covered to drive his car anyway i don't think it has is open driven i think that, that was doesn't a have to problem i don't think it has to be open driven i think your insurance covers you to drive any car that is actually insured that was my understanding penny i don't right. want to mislead anyone yeah. but but double check your policy, yeah. especially given your age. I think it doesn't apply if you're under 25, but I would have thought that your policy covers you to drive his car anyway. Um, yeah. Maybe it doesn't, so, ha- it doesn't have to be over. Thought, that's you know. a benefit of your insurance, if you know what I mean. But double, yeah. double check that. I know that's not why you rang, but just double check that. You're being disadvantaged because effectively you could say you're on maternity leave. You're choosing to stay at home uh, to, to, to that's care right, for your yeah. child. That in of itself is a bit yeah. uh, unfair that you're being discriminated uh, for making that choice. Because if you were at work and decided <laughs> not to, then there wouldn't be a problem. That's clearly what it is, Greg. I mean, my father would just like to have everything above board. I know I, I, maybe I am insured with my own policy, but my father's just very, you know, uh, he would like to have me on the named, on his name policy. He's a, he's I'm a, a he's name a, driver on my mother's policy. He's, a, he's an I daughter and a T crosser by the by the sounds of things. He wants That's to make right. sure you know, everything is right. Definitely yeah. is. He wants to make sure everything is right. And he's right too, in a I way, you know. Yeah. Um, but I think but that you're with the same it's, company as well. It kind of, it, it's a bit yeah. of a slap in the face as well, isn't it? It, it is, you know. Um, they don't open to 10 o'clock, this particular company. So I do tend to ring them up this morning now and find out some more information as to why they've refused. I mean, everything was going grand, was, you know, with terms of full license, no claims, etc. And just when he said that was my occupation at the minute, that almost my daughter. Um, no, they can't. They can't insure me. I would have thought too that you're not commuting to and from work. Um, that you would actually be more attractive, if you know what I mean. That yeah, you, you know. Yeah, you'd, you'd have. Okay. You know, it's, it, it, you'd, it doesn't you're, make sense. you're not tra- traveling too far. You know, it's only really to take my young son who um, just lives down. He, yeah. Our school is quite close by. You know, mm. it's just a bit of. Um, it's just to take children back course, and forth, you know. Listen, you, 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 you're 13 years full license, no claims. Uh, yeah. you're, you're, you've, you've said your age, you're old enough, do you know what I mean? So there's absolutely no reason. <laughs> the only reason is is because you uh, are at home, uh, which is crazy. Let us that, know how that, that conversation yeah. goes after you spend two and a half hours great. waiting for someone to answer the phone. Yeah, okay. that's right, yeah. Um, listen to the automated voice and stuff, yeah, I'll, and I'll, I'll get through. But I listen, and double, John, double, like, you know, yeah, okay. exactly, and double check if... I would have thought that your insurance, as I said, I don't want to, I'm not giving advice because I can't do that, but I would have thought that you're, as a, a policy holder, uh, uh, you're, you're covered to drive an insured car, but double check that anyway, um, Penny. Yeah, I'll double check that, Greg, yeah, I will, but as I Either said, way, the seller just likes to yeah, have everything right, you know, on his yeah. days, but... 
Um, I will. I'll, I'll get on that, Greg, and I'll let you know. Sure, Good I'll stuff. Text you in. Okay, uh, love to All everyone. Right. Thanks very much, Penny. Take care of yourself. Appreciate that. Um, there have been a lot of people killed on Irish roads, says a texter. If we closed every road where people died, there would be no roads. During the war, with the amount of people bombed and killed in the likes of London, they rebuilt. Now in Gaza, they will rebuild. People die in areas all the time. You just can't. Uh, you can't just shut them off. I know where you're coming from and what that's in relation to, but, uh, I mean, we have to think of other people's feelings as well and make sure that what we do is the right thing. I don't know what the right thing to do is, but what that, that's just what we have to try and ensure. We were talking too about yesterday about people not being good with taking compliments. The caller says Irish people in general get embarrassed when they get a compliment. I keep telling young people to be more like the Americans and lap it up and just say thank you. All right, let's not go too far that direction either. Um, if your daughter took her... La right, I'll come back to that one because they're, they're, they're mixed up there and I want to make sure that I'm not jumping from one issue to another, especially if it seems insensitive. So stay with us. We're coming up uh, again after 10. Uh, Grania's is in with Community Garden Information, so stay tuned for that. That's live after we get the news and obituary notices. The Nine Till Noon Show with Letterkenny Credit Union. Simplify your debts with a debt consolidation loan from Letterkenny Credit Union. Call us on 074 9102126 or apply online via our app or in office today. If you've lost someone close and it would help to talk, why not call the Bereavement Support Line on 1800 807077 Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. We're here to listen. Managed by Irish Hospice Foundation and supported by the HSE. You'll be pleasantly surprised by everything that's designed and printed at BizPrint. It's not just business stationery, cards and flyers, but pop-up banners, signs and party invites, even pens, mugs and tablecloths. Whatever you'd like printed, contact BizPrint and Letterkenny on 91779555. The Euro Millions jackpot is an estimated 80 million euro. Play responsibly in store, in app, or at lottery.ie. The National Lottery. It could be you. In the next 15 seconds, you're going to find out where is the best place in the Northwest to buy a bed or mattress. It's Rest Hex Beds and Furniture Mountaintop Letter Kenny, where comfort meets style. Live, on air, online and on the Highland Radio app, this is Highland Radio News. Good morning, I'm Michaela Clark with the news at 10 o'clock. TDs are beginning to arrive at Leinster House for what will be the election of the third Taoiseach of this dull term. Fine Gael leader Simon Harris will be nominated later this morning. Once elected, following a dull vote, Minister Harris will then travel to Ars Anucteron to meet with President Michael D. Higgins, who will officially appoint him as Taoiseach. Fine Gael MEP Maria Walsh believes Simon Harris taking over the role leaves the party in a very strong position. The Midlands North West MEP says Minister Harris will have a number of decisions to make over the coming hours ahead of the unveiling of his new cabinet this afternoon. Minister Simon Harris stepped up and uh, we had a very uh, busy two weeks, um, a very successful Ardesh in the University of Galway on Saturday where uh, Minister Harris laid out his his plan um, and highlighted a number of key priorities and we'll see what the next couple of hours look like in terms of his appointment um, for ministers and minister of states. Well, speaking on his way into Leinster House, Tanis Jamihal Martin says he's looking forward to working with the new Taoiseach on the programme for government. We're very focused on the programme for government and housing, uh, on getting the planning bill through the future funds, bill through to protect for future pensions and, and, and healthcare costs. So there's a lot of work to be done over the next 12 months and we, we're going to put the people first uh, and work hard for the people over the next 12 months. Gardaí and Donegal say too many people are playing roulette with the lives of road users by taking risks. They are appealing to motorists to start acting responsibly. It comes after a number of drivers were caught driving under the influence or speeding in the county. Tara Dugan has more. On Friday night, the Buncrana Roads Policing Unit detected a car travelling at 131 kilometres an hour in a 100 kilometre speed zone. The driver was stopped and arrested on suspicion of drink driving. They must now pay a 160 euro fine. They've received three penalty points and will face a possible court appearance. 
Meanwhile, just last night, the same Garda unit then caught a driver travelling at 134 kilometres an hour in a speed zone of 100 kilometres. Garthi from Letterkenny Garda Station were also in action last night as they arrested a driver on suspicion of drug driving after they tested positive for cocaine. Further tests are now awaited. Garthi say the risk-taking must stop and that it will also be too late to change your ways when a tragedy occurs. Police believe the occupants of a van travelling to Donegal via Oma last month may have information which could assist with a fatal collision investigation. 30-year-old Keelan Devlin died following the crash involving a Scania lorry and a white BMW 320 on the Kerr Road between 7.15 and 7.20pm on Tuesday, March the 5th. The occupants of the white van, which is understood to have been travelling to Donegal after working in the Dungannon area, are believed to have stopped and provided assistance at the scene. Police are urging them to contact them on the non-emergency number 101. The Donegal branch of the Irish Hotels Federation has a new chair. Ashling Arnold, General Manager of Arnon's Hotel in Dunfanaghy, has been elected to the position replacing Paul Diver. She previously worked as a chartered accountant and has acted as a consultant for the Donegal Local Enterprise Office. Ms Arnold says government needs to urgently step in to help tackle increasing business costs. There's absolutely no secret um, at the minute that the cost of doing business is hugely significant um, here in Ireland and as an industry we are at a crossroads having experienced unprecedented increases in operating costs over uh, the last 24 months. So this will be um, you know, a key issue that um, I will be focusing on along with uh, the National Hotels Federation um, to call on government um, to give us additional support. A man arrested in connection with the seizure of £10,000 10, worth of drugs in Derry has been charged. The 42-year-old faces a number of charges, including possession of a Class B controlled drug, possession of a Class B controlled drug with intent to supply, being concerned in the supply of a Class B drug and possessing criminal property. He's due to appear before Derry Magistrates Court later today. Weather night today will bring a good deal of dry weather with some spells of sunshine and a few showers. Highest temperatures of 8 to 11 degrees. That's all from Highland Radio News for now. We'll be back with an update again at 11 o'clock. Until then, you can keep up to date with the latest local news on our website, highlandradio.com. Good morning. The obituary notices this Tuesday morning, April 9th. The death has taken place of Bridie Cullen, No. 28 Orchard Drive, Donegal Town, and late of Balnatra in London. Funeral Mass tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock in St Bridget's Church, Balnatra, with burial afterwards in the adjoining cemetery. Funeral Mass can be viewed on churchservices.tv. The death has occurred of Lena Bruce Neharkin, 19 Churchtown Park, Castle Derg. Funeral service in her late home tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock with interment afterwards in St Patrick's Churchyard, Castle Derg. In keeping with Lena's wishes, the house is strictly private. The death has taken place of Alec Kerr, formerly of Balear and Drumaboden. His remains will be received into Letcher Presbyterian Church at 7 o'clock this evening to repose overnight. Funeral service tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock with interment in the adjoining burial ground. Family flowers only. Donations in lieu to the Lake House Comfort Fund. Care of Fancy McElwee Funeral Directors Milford. The death has taken place of Una Burns, 26 Brookfield Straban, reposing at her home from 12 noon today. Funeral leaving her home on Thursday morning at 20 past nine for Requiem Mass in St Mary's Church Melmount at 10 a.m. Interment afterwards in the adjoining cemetery. Donations in lieu of flowers please to the Alzheimer's Society, care of Quigley Funeral Directors. Family time please from 11 p.m. to 11 a.m. The Requiem Mass can be viewed on melmountparish.com. The death has occurred of Jimmy Foody, 13 Mountain View, Balladair, Letter Kenny. His remains are reposing at his late residence. Requiem Mass in St Eunan's Cathedral, Letter Kenny, at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, with burial afterwards in Conwall Cemetery. Funeral Mass can be viewed on churchservices.tv. Donations in lieu of flowers to Leukemia Research, care of any family member or Bradley O'Doherty Funeral Directors. House private from 10pm tonight and before the funeral tomorrow. 
The death has occurred of Gary O'Donnell, mean more than low, reposing at his own home today from 4pm for family and close friends only, please. Funeral mass tomorrow morning at 11am in St Columbus Church Acres with interment afterwards in Belcritch Cemetery. House private on the morning of the funeral, please. The death has occurred of Helena Cheney, Gordon North Ballandrate Lifford and formerly of Finglas West, Dublin 11. Remains reposing at her late residence. Funeral leaving from there this morning at 20 past 10 for Requiem Mass in St Patrick's Church Murlog at 11am. Interment afterwards in the adjoining churchyard. The Requiem Mass will be streamed live via the parish webcam at mcnmedia.tv. Donations in lieu of flowers if so desired to the Irish Cancer Society or care of any family member. Family time before the funeral this morning. The death has taken place of James Doherty, 23, Bessie Bell Court, Newton Stewart and formerly of Dregish. Funeral leaving his home this morning at quarter past ten for Requiem Mass in St Mary's Church, Dregish at 11am. Interment afterwards in the adjoining cemetery. Requiem Mass can be viewed live on churchservices.tv. The death has taken place of Mary Harkin Nee Cunyon, Harkin's Bar Broca Cluchan. Remains are reposing at her home. Funeral Mass at one o'clock this afternoon in the Church of Our Lady of Perpetual Succor Glen Finn with burial afterwards in Kilty Vogue Cemetery. Family time please before the funeral which can be viewed on mcnmedia.tv. Family flowers only please with donations if desired to the Donegal branch of the Diabetic Association and the Council for the Blind care of any family member. For family information and more details regarding wakes and funerals, please go to highlandradio.com. we mention the following from Aldi, you probably won't be able to concentrate on anything else. So, hope you're not doing dental work. Cottage pie made with board be a quality assured Irish organic lean round steak mince, 5% fat. Was $4.99, now $3.99. One of our Super 6 fresh meat offers this week. Buy all six and save even more. Follow the path to lower prices. Go all Aldi. See in-store or online for offers, terms and conditions while stocks last. You're very welcome back to the Nine Till Noon show. Now, yesterday on the programme, we were chatting to uh, Maria Rush about how maybe we're not good at taking compliments, you know, and that we should be better at that. Uh, You can check out her blog um, uh, for more info on that. Hi, Greg. Just listening to you and Maria, I feel so much better now. It takes me back to when one day I was visiting my parents' grave and suddenly this woman harassed and bullied me about where I parked my car. I was at a grave for a reason, as I do every other day since they died. As Maria said, it's their problem, not yours. I'll remember that from now on. Thanks, Lily. I'm sorry you went through that, Lily. Maria Rush is a wonderful person who tries to take the best out of every person. She needs... uh, (coughs) Excuse me. Uh, She's a wonderful, talented uh, lady. As regards compliments, it isn't only a woman thing. Very rarely would a man give another man a compliment. More than likely, they'd get the mickey taken from them. Indeed, and it wasn't based on... I mean, obviously, Maria's going to give examples from a female perspective, but no, uh, it, there's issues in taking compliments where you're a, a man uh, or a woman. Uh, hi, Greg, re compliments. At work one day, somebody made a comment about a photo of me. It went along the lines of how well I looked in the photo compared to reality. It was. Uh, it has totally ruined my self-confidence. I can't look at myself in the mirror anymore and stay well clear when photos are being taken. I think people not only need to give compliments but need to be very careful about what they say to people as it can have a very detrimental effect on a person. But I would say to you, if you can, is to try and put that uh, behind you. And it might have just been a passing throwaway comment and it might not have really meant exactly what you uh, believe it to, to have meant. I don't know, I'm stretching here, I'm reaching here. Uh, But the fact that it's impacted on you and that person has completely forgotten about it. He or she doesn't even know they said it. And do you really care of their opinion that it would make you change how you think about yourself? Because one person made a comment that you probably don't care about that person and what they say. You know, so try and park it and, and, um, you know, try not to view yourself in that way. It shouldn't have that impact on you. I mean... Unfortunately, it does. These things do affect us. But if you can try 
and, and move past it a little bit because, as I say, you probably don't really care what that person thinks, do you? Uh, in my opinion, of all my years driving on the road, the people that are most dangerous are the ones that take silly chances just to get two cars ahead or make a point like three seconds of time. These are the ones that cause uh, the collisions. Uh, Greg, lovely to hear that young man talking about modified cars. I am 71 and just wish I could have one of those Lexus or Impreza's indeed. Would you go with the sort of blue with the gold rims? Um, Sunday the 6th of August was a nightmare in Bundoran with show cars. The whole road was blocked. Uh, they were held up in traffic for an hour. They took up a whole car park. It was a nice day. You couldn't hear yourself with the noise. I've nothing against car enthusiasts, but Bundoran on a busy summer's day is not the place for a car show. Everyone wants to be out enjoying the sun and the cars were bringing everything to a standstill. There's lots of things bringing the country to a standstill too, though, isn't there? You know, uh, parades, festivals, all that type of stuff. It happens all the time in the summer. Uh, a lot of people um, having a conversation or having their views as it relates to the future of the site of the Chrysler tragedy. A caller says, if it's viable, I think the shop site could swap with the building suppliers across the main road uh, is maybe a possible solution with a business across the road. a, a very successful, um, uh, well-kitted-out business. I just can't see how that that's not, not an option. Uh, if your daughter took her last breath in this spot, you think two and a half years passing would make it any better? I'm surprised at you. Um, I'm not sure if that's a reference to something that I... Um, um, I'm not sure that's a reference to something that um, I said or not, uh, but I suspect if I said that, it was in the form of a question. Under no circumstances should a shop be rebuilt on the site of an explosion. A nice grounds, seats, maybe play equipment uh, for the children. Hi, Greg. On the Chrysler incident, my heart goes out to all the families and I often think of them. But if the shop does go ahead, what about having the names of the people on the shop floor as Remembrance Place, this on the spot that they passed? And I think that's typical of people sort of trying to um, come up with solutions to a very difficult situation. I think that might just be completely unpalatable to those who lost people. But uh, I respect uh, your opinion and understand exactly uh, where you're coming from in trying to maybe come up with a solution. Mary T. Sweeney uh, was on to the show. She's an election candidate, of course. We have a crisis of suicides in Donegal with devastating families left behind. Many victims die to the lack of mental health services. I would suggest why not spend uh, money on mental health support workers? Uh, yeah, indeed, and people often, and one have to be careful with our language here, people often uh, sort of would say, we talk an awful lot about road safety, but you don't take into account or don't talk enough about uh, people's uh, dying because of their mental health, which we do on this programme an awful lot, actually, to the point where sometimes you get a message saying, you're not talking about this again, I can't talk about it enough. I think it's really, really important. The issue is, is really, as a society, how we discuss suicide, how we count suicides. We know the, um, we know that the uh, there's work ongoing to try and better um, uh, account for the amount of suicides that's happening. Because until such time as you actually have an official proper figure that we all know reflects the reality. You know, how can you talk about it? How can you address the issues or, or make strategies or policies or whatever? So we really need to uh, figure out um, exactly how many people are dying by suicide. But also, too, it's a very difficult subject because often there's someone that is uh, has been affected by that very recently or in the past and it's still very painful for them. Uh, in Quest, sometimes it's probably is a suicide but it's not referenced as one it's very very complicated and we always try and do the right thing on this program and we'd never show, sort of shy away from talking about it but it's making sure that we do so in a way that is constructive and helpful but doesn't actually uh, compound a problem uh but i think a lot of people would agree with mary t's uh comments on that i'm open to any suggestions in how we talk about it discuss it whatever it might be uh as long as it helps people OK, we're going to take a break and coming up afterwards, we're joined in studio by Garda Grania Doherty with the latest in appeals and information from Angara Siakana. The county's number one talk show, the nine till noon show on Highland Radio. It's time for Vision Ireland Bingo on Highland Radio. It's Tuesday the 9th of April. You're playing on the brown sheet. The reference number is S12. It's game number 15. The numbers are 88, 6, 
19, 12, 42, 43, 84, 16, and finally, 29. Phone your claim to 9104833 before 8 tonight, leaving your name, contact number and the name of the shop where you purchased your book and we'll call you back the next working day. Get all your Vision Ireland bingo information at highlandradio.com. Are you a male aged 40 plus? Are you looking after your health? Letter Kenny Medics are now offering a full medical check that includes blood pressure BMI, cardio, respiratory, prostate and testicular checks, blood tests that will check your sugar levels, cholesterol, lipid and bone profiles with a full aftercare provided including prescriptions or referrals if required. Your health is your wealth. Book an appointment today at letterkennymedics.ie or call 07492 02955. Letterkenny Medics. We listen if you want to talk. Mike Denver in concert with guests Philomena Begley and Brendan Shine at the Millennium Forum Derry this Saturday, April 13th. Tickets on sale now at the Millennium Forum box office. That's Mike Denver with guests Philomena Begley and Brendan Shine at the Millennium Forum Derry this Saturday, April 13th. Don't miss a great concert. With Big Scoop Ice Cream at Kelly Steiner in Letterkenny, there's so much choice. From Bubblegum Blast to Oreo Crunch, named after Kelly's famous robot waiter, there's loads of flavours to choose from, or you can create your own. Treat the kids and the big kids to a yummy ice cream dessert at Kelly's Diner, Mountaintop, Letterkenny. The Nine Till Noon Show is brought to you by Letterkenny Credit Union. Digital loans now available. Apply online or via our app today and get your loan transferred directly to your current account. The Community Garda Information Slot is brought to you by Sheridan Security Systems. Protecting what you value most. Call today and get your zero wire alarm system from €299. Sheridan Security, 912625. It's 20 past 10, Tuesday the 9th of April 2024 and it's time for this week's edition of Community Garda Information. And in studio with me today is Garda Grania Doherty. Grani, good morning to you. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning, Greg. Right, uh, quite a bit to get through, so we'll uh, get straight into the appeals. And uh, Gardy continued to investigate a case of assault and endangerment in Burt. Yes, so Gardy and Bunkrana are investigating this incident of alleged assault and endangerment. This occurred at Green and Avalyuk near Burt on the evening of Sunday the 31st of March and around 10pm. So following this incident, a female in her 30s was conveyed, conveyed to Letterkenny University Hospital for treatment for non-life-threatening injuries. A man in his 30s was arrested by Gardaí a short time later. He was detained at a Garda station under Section 4 of the Criminal Justice Act 1984. He was later charged in connection with this incident. We're appealing to anybody who may have witnessed this incident to come forward, especially those who were present in and around that area of Green and Afalyuk on Sunday evening, who may have observed a red Kia Sportage in the area in particular. Additionally, any road users, as usual, we always appeal for the dash cam footage. Anybody that was in that area with a dash cam, uh, we're asking them to make that footage available to us. Anybody with relevant information is asked to contact Gardaí and Bunkrana on 9320540 or as always, this goes for all of our appeals, the Garda Confidential Line, 1800 666 111. The next appeal is in relation to a, a very recent road traffic collision. Yes, so Gardaí are currently at the scene of this collision. It occurred this morning. It involved two vehicles at Umgall Mallon Head in around 6.50am it's believed to have occurred. The driver of both vehicles have been taken to hospital to receive medical treatment for their injuries. We're appealing to anybody who may have witnessed the collision firstly to come forward to chat to us. If anybody was in that area between in around 6.30am and 7 7 a.m. this morning with the dash cam again we're asking them to make that footage available to us. Gardaí and Bunkrana can be contacted on 9320540. Diversions are in place at the minute at the Umgall Junction, that's near the primary school there, and the road's expected to remain shut for a number of hours, so we're asking people, please, just to use an alternative route if possible. OK, and uh, if you have any information while it's fresh in your head, certainly please get in contact with the Gardaí. Uh, criminal, alleged criminal damage or criminal damage to a business in Letterkenny now? Yes, this happened at a business premises on the Pierce Road in Letterkenny shortly before 9.30pm on Friday the 5th of April. So CCTV has been viewed. Further CCTV is being canvassed in relation to the incident. A male approached the business in question and kicked the front window, causing it to smash. 
So we're appealing to road users who were in that area. That'd be a busy road there, the Pierce Road. So we're hoping somebody may have passed, may have seen what happened, or may have dash cam footage of this man on foot in the area between 9.15pm and 9.45pm if anybody was in that area with a dash cam we're asking them to give us that footage and if anybody again has any relevant information we're asking them to contact Gardy and Letter Kenny on 9167 100 OK um, Criminal damage now in Moville Yes this happened at Carol Naff Moville between 3pm on Sunday the 31st of March and 9am on Tuesday the 2nd of April a jeep was parked up at a business premises in that area between those times and damage was caused to it so the front windscreen was cracked and the driver's side window was smashed. Nothing was stolen from the Jeep as entry wasn't again to it. If anybody observed any sort of suspicious activity in that area or again, if they can offer any information that would assist with our investigation, we're asking them to contact Gardy in Bunkrana on 9320540. OK, and uh, the theft of a van now? Yeah, so this van was stolen and recovered. So this white Peugeot partner van, it has a partial registration number of NX62. It was stolen from Rosemount Terrace in Letterkenny between April 1st and April 2nd. This van was parked at Rosemount Terrace um, on Monday, April 1st at 12.30pm. When the owner returned the following morning or the following day to collect it, he realised then it had been stolen. The van was located at Kirkstown, Letterkenny, at 10.30am on Tuesday the 2nd of April, so it had been completely destroyed by fire. We're appealing to anybody who may have observed this van being driven in or around Letterkenny or at any location between April 1st and 2nd to make contact with us on 9167 100 in Letterkenny. Again, if anybody can assist with information, they can contact us in Letterkenny or again the Garda Confidential line on 1800 666 111. And now um, uh, the theft of an e-scooter in Letterkenny too. Yeah, this the e-scooter. This happened on Tuesday the 2nd of April at about 8pm. This happened on the Long Lane in Letterkenny. So the owner of this e-scooter was approached by two males who took they just took the e-scooter from him and they took off on foot in the direction of the hospital. One of these males, he was approximately 5'5 five five or 5'6 five in height and wore a black puffer jacket. The other was taller, slightly taller and wore a grey hoodie with the hood up. This scooter has a black frame, it has red brake lines and the word e-scooter in red writing on the footstand. So we're appealing to anybody who may have travelled in that area who had a dash cam to make the footage available to us in around 8pm on Tuesday the 2nd of April. If anybody's seen these two males of that description in the area on foot, or if they witnessed the incident, we asked them to contact us in Letter Kenny on 9167 100. Should anybody be approached um, and asked would they like to buy this uh, e-scooter, maybe some of the shops or in a private capacity, mm. or if anybody has any information in relation to the current location of this scooter, we'd ask them also to get in touch with us. Yeah, and you could argue, like, why would you just do this once if you're capable of doing it at all? Uh, a decent description to... They would stand out five foot six, a black puffer jacket, five foot five, five foot six. The other guy, taller, wore a grey hoodie with the hood up. Uh, so maybe you've seen them at the time or, or beforehand or since. Exactly. Right. Um, now we're talking about a uh, traffic collision and appeal in relation to it that happened at Gortley Road, didn't it? It did. This one happened a few weeks back uh, on the 6th of March. Um, I think we were quite hopeful maybe that somebody may have come forward between then and now, but yeah. unfortunately that isn't the case. So uh, this traffic collision happened on the Gartley Road in Letterkenny on Wednesday the 6th of March, shortly before 4pm. A white van with a partial registration of 10DL had had a trailer attached. It caused damage to a fence at a property. It was doing a turn on the road and it's believed that the trailer then connected with the fence causing the damage. There was a funeral in the area at the time and there was quite a bit of funeral related traffic. So we're hopeful someone may have seen this van or may have captured it on dash cam footage. We're appealing to anybody who was in that area in a van similar to this with a trailer attached to come and speak to us if they believe that they may have caused the damage and you know they may not have realised at the time that, that the damage was Quite caused possible, yeah. so we just want to give them them this opportunity also to come forward to us Gardaí may be contacting Letter Kenny on 9167100 in relation to that incident and it, it is not the same incident but not unrelated to a couple of questions we had over the last couple of weeks of property owners having their fence damages, yeah. damaged and by the time you know they realise the damage is done the car has been towed been and towed, left. Yeah. Now, if you damage someone's property, you are obliged. Well, I mean, you. I mean, you're leaving the scene of a, a collision there, aren't you? Of course, yeah. And the obligation would be on the driver of that vehicle to remain at the scene to alert Gardy. But yeah. unfortunately, in real life, this is 
often not the case. Yeah. And these collisions often happen during the night. And as you said, by the time the homeowner gets up in the morning, the damage has been caused. There's no vehicle in sight. It has been removed or towed away during the night. So um, I think there is there is a question from last week there in relation right, to well, that. We'll get about, to that after yeah. we continue our appeals. My apologies on that. No, you're okay. um, now, this is uh, a bit of advice, uh, a bit of a heads up. In one particular area of the county, but this, uh, this, um, I'm presuming this advice or, or these cases can happen anywhere at all. So this is in relation to begging, is it? It is, yeah. So we have received recent reports. I was actually approached by the community based Garda in the Bally Buffet area and she asked me just to highlight this mm -hmm. um, we have had reports that people are being approached in car park areas shopping retail car park areas within the Twin Towns, Bally Buffet mainly um, people have been approaching them, mainly females have been approaching them, offering to sell them perfume, begging for money for fuel or for various other items so we're just asking people to contact uh, Garda immediately if they are approached in this manner because it seems to be the elderly really and you know, that are being approached. And sometimes people can feel very intimidated mm -hmm. and feel under obligation to hand yeah. their money over. They're almost in these paying cases. to get out of the situation. They are, of course, almost, yeah. And yeah. they're afraid and they, they hand over their money out of fear, I suppose, mostly, you know, and we, we don't want that to be the case. So we ask people, please, if you're near a shop, if you're in a car park of a shopping area, just, you know, just make your way straight to the shop where you can go to a staff member and ask for help. Alert Gardy if you're approached in this way also. We're asking people, don't buy goods in this uh, manner on the streets. We're asking people, you know, if they wish to be charitable and they wish to hand over their money to um, for charitable reasons, go to a registered charity and maybe give a donation there um, rather than hand their money over to a stranger. Yeah, OK. And and it's not wasting Garda time. Of course. Uh, contact the Garda, um, certainly, if you see that, and they can act upon that. Uh, and uh, our next uh, topic is off the back of um, a contact from um, a resident, obviously, in the county. What, what happened here? Yeah, we spoke about bogus callers recently, yeah. so I don't want to be too repetitive and go well, on and on about bogus callers, but we did receive a very recent report. Um, a man, had, his elderly father actually lives on the outskirts of Letterkenny, and his father was out in the garden doing a bit of work. He was approached by a man who purported to be a workman. He had a work van with him with details of a roofing company and contact numbers and an email address on the side of the van. And this man said that he had just completed work at a neighbouring house. But when this elderly gentleman asked him, well, which, which neighbour, you know, which neighbour, he, he was unable to tell him. He was unable then to point mm. out exactly or to tell him which mm -hmm. house he had been at. But he was quite persistent, this uh, caller, and he was insisting really that this gentleman would allow him to carry out work on his roof or on his driveway. Um, the man, the elderly man, his son, thankfully arrived on scene. And once he arrived on scene, this man took off yeah. immediately, you know, just in an instant once he's seen that somebody else had shown up. Now, um, the son did carry out a few inquiries. He took photos of the work van as it left and it's believed it's believed that this, this company doesn't exist. Um, you know, he's checked out the email address, the, the company name and the contact numbers and can find no trace of them online or no company associated with them. So we just want to reissue just a short piece of advice to people. Um, really, this advice we're issuing to family members. Maybe if you have an elderly family member or a more vulnerable family member living alone, just to remind them about bogus callers. Um, they can be persistent, you know, and they can, um, they can, sometimes they won't take no for an answer. And if you're there on your own, it's, it's a very difficult situation to be in. So we're asking people to look out for anybody who calls to your door. Look, this time of year onwards, the weather's picking up, the evenings are getting brighter. These people will start to show up. They do every year. They offer power washing, painting. They may be selling goods. And they do prefer to target the more vulnerable and the elderly, people who live alone. We advise people not to engage with such callers. If you're indoors, don't open your door to anybody unless you're confident that they're known to you or you have a genuine reason to be there. Use a chain lock for added security or, as we mentioned before, the doorbell camera of some of your yeah. family could set that up for you. That would be an added piece of security for you. Um, contact Gardy immediately. If a caller such as this calls to your home, you know, you're inside and they're not taking no for an answer, they're remaining on your doorstep or you feel intimidated by them, contact us. Give us a description, a good, as good a description as you can. You know, if you can look out a window, take a note, a registration number of their vehicle, um, even an accent, their height, what they were wearing. You know, these are all useful pieces the of information. The problem happens, though, when you agree at any level at all for some type of work to be carried out at your property. Be it roof. We know the scam there. I've just been up on the roof. Half your roof is yeah. gone. Or the driveway, you know, and they don't put down the... 
the right type of yeah. uh, product or what have you. So don't agree to have any type of work carried out. Oh, certainly not. Don't agree to have any type of work carried out. And we had this recently with these tarmac, you know, these tarmac layers yeah. that were calling door to door. And unfortunately, people did lose money. They agreed to get the work done, probably under duress also, you know, feeling intimidated by them. Um, genuine tradesmen or builders, well, I've certainly never had one call to my door offering, you know, these people, genuine workmen or tradesmen, builders, plumbers, electricians, whatever the case is, they advertise online, they advertise in newspapers, they don't they don't have the need to call door to door no, seeking tell work. You, and they tell you when you do get through to them, I'll be there in about six months. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, there's... there's but they're a, in such demand. They um, are in demand, uh, yeah. Obviously, it's not six months. But the point you're making is is that we, we all know how busy uh, the people working in these types of industries are at the moment, and they're not going around knocking on doors looking for work. Exactly, you know, and as so. you said, if you ring yourself to, to get a tap fixed or to get anything fixed, a small job especially around your house, you know, it's, it is very difficult to yeah, get some because is, they so. are chock-a-block, they're yeah. flat to the mat so exactly. they don't have time to be calling door to door so just look, if you have, if you have any sort of caller call to your home, take as many details as you can down, mm. jot them down let us know and please do look out for elderly or vulnerable family members and neighbours, look out for them, you know the way things were years ago, I suppose there was more of that people kind of checking in on their neighbours and you don't, you, know, see it as much. you don't see it as much now, and it's sad that that seems yeah. to be and dwindling. And it'd be great to have it revived, you know. know it would be, and because it would be better for us as a people as well as anything else. But also, too, I don't think unless you've uh, seen it happen, and unfortunately, I've seen it happen close to home, uh, how persistent and almost sort of aggressive and that that the, the they can get. Uh, and people fall for it or, or people go right okay 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 because it's just shock and awe you see and that's how they uh, that's how they get uh, some people to fall victim to uh, this kind of stuff right uh, I suppose it's not an appeal it's uh, an instant and an instant update uh, so to speak in relation to a, a burglary uh, earlier today yeah so I just came in this morning so I just thought I'd stick this in um, and make people aware that a burglary occurred in the early hours of this morning April 9th it occurred at a business premises at Kelly Last in Letterkenny. Now, thankfully, we're not issuing any appeals in relation to it. Gardy did arrest a man at the scene and he was charged to appear in court later this morning. OK. So. Now, what's the story on the 60 kilometre speed zone from the Port Bridge? People are coming behind me and beeping and acting like I'm going too slow. People use it as an overtaking lane. This is the four lanes in Letterkenny, effectively, isn't it? It is. Yep. And there is a 60 kilometre speed limit in place between the Dry Arch roundabout and the Pole Star roundabout. It's a 60 kilometre only speed limit. And you do see it. I see it myself in the evenings. You do. You see... People are tending to use the, the outer lane. You know, they're using it as an overtaking lane. Mm -hmm. Speed checks are conducted on those lanes. I don't know if people are aware of that or not. As with any other road, speed checks are conducted. So if anybody is found to be speeding on that stretch of road or any stretch of road, they will receive a fixed charge penalty notice, €160 Euro fine and three penalty points. And just my advice to anybody, your caller that rang in with this question, or anybody that's having issues um, with speed, on that stretch of road or any road, if anybody observes any sort of driving that they believe, they, they feel that it's a dangerous manner of driving or like that if somebody's driving bumper to bumper with them and beeping and then overtaking them at speed, we would ask them to please take note of the registration number off yeah. the car in question and notify Gardaí immediately and we can investigate further from there. Because my attitude is, and I hope it's right because I'm saying it to a guard, is that if I'm coming in towards Letter Kenny, right, I'm going to head out... Uh, past the Mount Aragal, I will go straight into the right-hand lane to stay in lane because yeah. otherwise I'm trying to cut from the left into the right as we approach where the traffic might be backing up a little bit. So if I'm going right or straight ahead, I'm in that right-hand lane sitting at uh, about five kilometres under the speed a bit just to be extra safe, you know yourself. Yeah. Um, and, y you know, that's it is not, the, the right lane's not an overtaking lane it's best to be in that lane, isn't it, early on? Exactly. And as you say, that's what I do too. If I'm coming into work, I, automatic, I automatically go into the lane, you know, yeah. into which route I'm intending to exactly. stay on okay. and I remain in it. But you do see cars sometimes and they go into Weaving. one lane, they yeah. zigzag, they go over back, over back because the cars in front of them aren't going fast enough mm. and they're in and out. So if anybody does observe driving like that, they, they perceive it to be dangerous, we do encourage them yeah. to contact us and make a report. And just generally not nothing to do with you uh, or the guards. 50 felt a bit slow. 60's all right, you know what I mean? It's for, yeah. for that road, yeah. I think 50 just felt a little bit... Um, can you park on a footpath, asks a listener. No, you cannot park on a footpath. So parking on footpaths is highly inconsiderate, number one, but it is also illegal to park on a footpath. 
It's illegal to park in any way which interferes with traffic flow or obstructs or endangers other road users to include pedestrians. So you cannot park in a footpath either partly or wholly. So illegal parking results in blocked footpaths. Look, you're forcing vulnerable road users such as wheelchair users, mammies or daddies with buggies, the visually impaired um, children and other pedestrians that don't have adequate room to walk safely in the footpath if you're blocked, if you're parked wholly or partly on it. So if you do park in a manner such as this, you are liable to receive a fixed charge penalty notice and the penalty for that offence is €80 euro fine. Mm-hmm. We see it all too often, though. Um, it, oh, it's, yeah, okay. most, unfortunately. But yeah. it is not legal. Right, OK. Uh, just to recap then on the fence question. What happens if you own a property and have a fence around it? Our fence has been knocked down constantly. This is a great cost for people to repair. It'll cost €1,200 euro for concrete posts. Who's left to pay for it? The cars were actually pulled out but they never say who they are. They don't come and tell you that you they've knocked uh, your fence. Now, we kind of touched on this earlier, but just to be absolutely clear, what should happen in this situation? We did, and unfortunately, this is a very common occurrence. Mm-hmm. We see this quite often. And uh, some houses, unfortunately, get hit more often than yeah, others, yeah, depending yeah. on where their house is located and their fence is located. But should this happen... Regardless of whether the car is gone from the scene or not, please do report the matter to Gardaí because I think more often than not, and especially if it's happened a few times, people then tend to think, look, what's the point or what? Mm. There's always a point. Report it to us. We can check. We can appeal for dash cam footage. We can check neighbouring businesses for CCTV. So there is always a point. Please do report this matter to us. Look... Regardless of whether you, uh, you report it or not, if the car's gone and if the, if the driver can't be located, then unfortunately, yes, the homeowner would be liable mm-hmm, to pay for the mm-hmm. damage themselves or to go through their home insurance. So my advice is, if this is uh, happening to you regularly, um, my advice would be to invest in a camera co- to cover yeah, that area, yeah. cover that area, the fenced area outside your home. At least then you have that added security that should it happen, you will at least get the registration. Yeah, you have evidence, of, you have yeah, evidence sure. of course. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Um, and some of these batteries, uh, sorry, some of these cameras too um, have batteries that last a very, very long time and only record when they see movement and stuff. So there's ways around it, even there if it's are, quite yeah. quite removed from the property. Garda Grani Doherty, as always, thank you so very, very much. Uh, that was Community Garda Information for this Tuesday, the 9th of April. It'll be replayed on ours and the Garda Shikana's Facebook page a little later on. And, of course, you can listen back to playback on our website as well. Uh, and back live for you after the 10 o'clock news next uh, Tuesday. Watch the show live now on YouTube, Facebook and at highlandradio.com. The 9 till noon show is brought to you by Letterkenny Credit Union with monster loans available up to €60,000 for all occasions. Visit letterkennycu.ie. Celebrate exceptional businesses in Donegal. Nominate your favourite for the Highland Radio Customer Service Awards in association with McElhenney's Department Store. Our Customer Service Awards celebrate the businesses that go above and beyond to provide excellent customer service. To nominate your favourite business, simply visit highlandradio.com, fill out the nomination form and tell us why you love this business. The winners will receive recognition at our special award ceremony on June the 9th. Plus, they'll have the satisfaction of knowing that they made a positive impact on their customers. Nominate now. Nominations close 23rd of April. The Ombudsman for Children's Office has been taking complaints and promoting children's rights for 20 years. So we ask children what kind of Ireland they want to see for the next 20. More affordable housing. More facilities for young people. The thing I'd like to change is to end war. Action on climate change. More mental health services. An end to homelessness. An end to food poverty. Equality for women in sport. Help with the cost of living crisis. For more info on the work of the Ombudsman for Children's Office, check out oco.ie. For day-to-day healthcare needs, generations have trusted the experienced staff at McGee's Chemist Letterkenny. From coughs and colds to aches and pains, from vitamin supplements to first aid essentials. McGee's have what you need, when you need it, with a full prescription service available daily. McGee's Chemist Main Street Letterkenny. For healthcare help and advice you can always trust. 
Ryan Adams is back on tour in 2024. Join Highland Radio on our trip to Dublin to see the man himself at the Three Arena on Tuesday the 21st of May 2024. Your trip includes luxury transfers, bed and breakfast at the four-star Carton Hotel Blanchestown, your standing ticket to the show and a shopping trip to Dublin City Centre the following day. Find out more on the outlet at highlandradio.com or call us on 074 91 25,000. Now we are joined in studio by Avril McMonagall, who has a lot of strings to her bow, including author, because we're talking about her new book, A Suitcase Full of Stories. Good morning, Avril. Good morning, Greg. Congratulations. I think Thank it's a you great achievement much. to, uh, you know, from concept to production. To, to go through with all that. So it's a long old journey, isn't it? Yeah, but bit daunting because, you know, um, the book is self-published. So, um, you know, it's it's a huge investment, not only of time, but also of money. And then you get a bit of imposter syndrome halfway through where you think, am I doing the right thing? Mm. Is this going to be worth all the work and all the money? And then but i mean it's it's something that i've always wanted to do um i've written uh i've written publications before but never in my own name so this is kind of the first book that you know has my own name on it mm -hmm. and that in itself um has been very satisfying and and it's it's visually uh there's a lot of visual elements to this is that an extra complication when you're self-publishing yeah absolutely. i would imagine you know because yeah. text would be easier to reproduce yeah uh, why did you want to have before we talk about the book and all that why did you want so much uh, so many pictures and graphics accompanying the words well i'm i'm ex i'm an extremely visual person myself okay um i think people engage with um text and uh, books and publications if you know, there's a lot of visual content. I also wanted it, the content to be very real. I wanted it to feature early childhood services, not just st using stock images all the time, you know, ensuring that I was able to bring that piece of reality to the publication um, where I was showing practice out in early childhood settings. So I put a call out um, two services that are using the Mosaic digital app and ask them would they provide stories for the book and would they provide um, visual content and thankfully uh, quite a few did and and you will see them featured throughout the book. So who's the book for? Okay, so the book is principally for early childhood educators, those working with young children in early childhood settings. It's also for students who are studying early childhood care and education. And we've had a huge response um, from lecturers in colleges uh, who are teaching on degree programmes. Um, it, it's principally about um, a teaching and learning technique in early education called documentation for learning, which is about seeing children as individuals and taking them from where their strengths are and their interests are and building their learning on that. But I suppose that's the kind of that's the kind of education side of it. But the strong message that I wanted to run through the book, i.e. that's that's the reason for the the suitcase full of stories analogy. It's it, it kind of links a wee bit to what you were talking about, self image and self esteem and things yesterday on the show, because it's it's all about that invisible suitcase that we all carry with us now as adults, which we started to carry as children. And that's what we look at in early education. We look at not so it's not so much saying, OK, you're going to start to learn at this stage. Of course you do. But it's really about putting the foundations in place uh, to enable children to be secure enough to have the security to actually learn. And we use the word foundations, but in this case, uh, this case, it's it's literal, isn't it? Because this is the beginning of the development of a, a child, and and you can follow it right through to adulthood, twenty two years of age in college. But it all starts off yeah. there, and 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 we know you have to have the right foundations to build on to give everyone the best chance of maximising their potential. Yeah, well, I mean, this the, arguably, Greg, this this is the most most important stage of education. Mm. I mean, I've been at this a long, long time. Do you think people get that like you get it? No, no, no. I, I, I mean, our government obviously doesn't get it mm. because, you know, for over 30 years now, um, people like me have been saying the exact same thing. And although we have 
we have progressed somewhat from where we were. Um, we are nowhere near uh, investing enough in early childhood care and education. Um, there's a huge staffing crisis, there's a funding crisis, and this is all impacting on children. And this is one of the reasons that the book is kind of so refreshing. It's to kind of, in many ways, bring the narrative back to children mm. where it should be. Mm -hmm. um, because now, increasingly, every time we hear something about childcare services on the news or in the media, it's about it's about strikes, it's about walkouts, it's about you know protest days, all which are needed to draw attention to the crisis in the sector. But it but means we're not talking day, about how we're, we're doing it. we're not talking about yeah, children, yeah, yeah, you know, and you. we're not talking about this very crucial stage, you know, where we are responsible in early education for ensure, ensuring that children have that security to learn. Because if that's not instilled mm. in early education, you will have problems later Talk on. Talk to me about the security to learn. What do you mean by that? Okay, well, what I mean by security to learn is that there's you you don't teach someone how to read you first of all have to teach children about books are exciting books are something that's enjoyable and then reading will come you mm. will have nurtured that interest mm -hmm. things like positive dispositions for very young children things like resilience self-esteem independence all those positive dispositions are part of our job in early education to instill in children. Some, to some of the, to some extent, and I can say this as a parent, right? Mm -hmm. So no one can jump on me. Mm -hmm. To some extent, though, it, then that's kind of probably unpacking a little bit of the work of the parents and guardians, then, because we way? might send them into early education, you know, uh, money coddled or you, you know, maybe not encouraging reading as much as we can in the way that you talk of or do you know what I mean? But it's about it's about time and interest principally, Greg. Mm. You know, if a child if you this analogy that I use of the invisible suitcase, so you you imagine this child is carrying this invisible suitcase. Every time you make time for that child, mm -hmm. every time you speak to them and ask them about their day. Every time you positively reinforce something that they've done, not about saying, oh, oh correct that, or maybe you could put the eyes there mm -hmm. or the nose there. You know, that's amazing. Tell me why you did it that way. That's all positive messaging that mm -hmm. is going into that suitcase. Yeah, I get And you. that will stay with that child for life. Mm -hmm. Now, the as I was driving up the road this morning, you had a caller that was commenting about um, taking something very personally. Mm -hmm. The issue there is with that person's own inbuilt sense of yeah. self-esteem and resilience. Mm -hmm. And another person... Which is a, which is fragile because one fragile. person's comment, yeah. uh, a, a non-entity probably in this person's life, it's sad that they were so vulnerable yeah. Yeah. in themselves that this person was able to have that impact on them. And I couldn't articulate what I wanted to after that, but that person forgot they said that 10 seconds later. Of course later. they did. Of course you know. they did. But the thing is, like, when we talk about education, my own experience of education was a very poor one. Um, I, I was a child with very, very low self-esteem. I was naturally very quiet and very mm -hmm. shy. It's, that's addressed in the book. You know, I was very honest about it and I wasn't seen. Mm -hmm. I was never seen by an educator the whole way through mm -hmm. my own educational process because I wasn't out there. I wasn't able to speak up. I wasn't able to do all those things. Mm -hmm. So therefore, that had a massive impact on my own personal self-esteem. Yeah. I mean, I am the biggest, um, I have the biggest sense of imposter syndrome ever. Yes. Y you know, uh, yeah. and will carry that with me for but the rest of But if you had an life. educator then in, in, in your, your, your younger years, and they recognised that yeah. and sort of brought you to one side or brought you to the front or yeah. employed some of the techniques that you have in this yes. book. You're saying you'd be a different person now or likely be. Isn't that yeah. scary? Absolutely. Not, it's not scary. It's fascinating and scary and yeah. but all it's at true. the same time. But it's true, Greg. It's that so, your, yeah. What you are as an adult now, yeah. you can trace it back to not yes. being seen in the education setting. Yes, because the messaging that I have in my suitcase is that I wasn't able enough, I wasn't clever enough, yeah. I wasn't all these things. In actual fact, I was. You know, mm. I didn't go back to education until I was an adult. Right. And in actual fact, until I had three children. Um, because I, I kind of thought, you know, 
well, I need, if I'm going to now start to say to them, you know, I need, you know, you need to work hard in school. You know, I, I didn't have that background. Mm. So I educated myself as an mm. adult and I, I lent very firmly towards this early education because I recognised from my own experience, mm-hmm. not so much early education wasn't a big thing in those days, but I mean, I mean, teaching through criticism, mm-hmm. teaching through, uh, well, when I say teaching, you know, uh, teaching through shaming a child. Tough love or whatever people might you know, have framed it at the time. That, that was yeah. not teaching. You know, that was not teaching, you know, and, and I couldn't wait to get out yeah. of school. Do you know? And, and those who are, you know, and I don't know what the percentage of the population are, those who are very clever and everything comes easy to them, um, probably don't experience this. Or maybe they do, don't get me wrong. I'm not I'm not trying to create some sort of a hierarchy here, but I'm yeah. just, you, you know, those that maybe need the little bit of help yeah, and see, who don't get seen say, are It's those funny that, you should say that because I, I don't view intelligence as being clever. But unfortunately, the education system yeah, does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it I, does. I'm, I'm, but, but I'm not talking about my views. I'm talking yeah, about how the education yeah, system yeah. Uh, judges people. Because um, if you have somebody with... Um, a lovely personality, really good social skills, somebody that people can connect with and identify to, that's much more important. But we don't, you that's know. not a, a leaving cert subject, unfortunately. Or, uh, But then yeah. you, you couple, you have to marry that with the, what skills do you need for life? Yeah. What skills do you need to be successful mm-hmm. in life? And it's not algebra, it's not, you know, it's, yeah. it's all these soft skills. So in, in terms of... of, of, of Early educators, mm-hmm. do you think they get that, and oh, do, do they have to buy into the way you think? Do you think, or do they mostly think like that? But this book not only sort of talks about, but actually demonstrates how they can better do their job. They do think like that uh, in terms of the educators so they want that to I do know, it? and they want yeah. to do it. But okay. the pressures are such within the system at the moment mm. that it's 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 stopping their ability to focus completely on children in yeah. the way that we need to be and there's an awful lot of rhetoric out there about what we need to be doing but in actual fact you know when you're looking at um staff teams that are paid very low wages when we have a recruitment crisis and everybody's studying to degree level and then heading mm. off to dubai or going into primary schools we can't keep our talent yeah. within the sector yeah and also to i think for those of us who maybe don't realize the importance of these people as a general population that perhaps we should that they have uh, some of the, the 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 biggest impact on our children's lives throughout their life, albeit yeah, at the early stage Yeah, and it's something even from your own perspective here on the show, Greg, that I think that you know that focus on early education mm-hmm. would be really really welcome. You know, in terms of you know talking about some of the concerns from that perspective, mm-hmm. not like what funding is available or what you know really from that perspective of how can mm-hmm. we. But work often, with the, early the, yeah. But often centers. those that, that represent the the that the educators that's what they come to us with as yes, well of so yeah, can't yeah. bat that away and say yeah, let's yeah. talk yeah, yeah, yeah I take your that, point but, yeah. but have a different space whereby yes. okay so it's not the only conversation so for in example town. just a shout out to an event um, that I'm participating in tomorrow in the Clannery between 2 and 4 o'clock tomorrow in the Clannery Hotel um, Cybrisk um, uh, ITIS sorry ITIS Secure Technologies are running a seminar as especially for early early childhood practitioners mm-hmm. and managers, which is looking at digital risk, managing digital risk within early childhood settings. So I'm speaking from the child's rights perspective mm-hmm. in terms of child privacy and the propensity to post children's images on social media. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be my contribution to the day. Another really interesting topic that a lot of countries are now starting to grapple with mm-hmm. and something that would make a really interesting conversation. Yeah, I'd actually be interested in that conversation with you uh, so we might sort that out yep. actually because cool. um, it's not about making people feel guilty or that they've done wrong Absolutely but sometimes not. we don't realise exactly. yeah, yeah. so uh, just very finally the book is uh, targeted at those uh, in uh, education early education but it's very accessible uh, for people who aren't to understand their children and maybe employ some of this activity at home or what have you. Yeah. The, the uh, so as I say, it's not overly. I mean, it's obviously it's it's detailed, right? But it's presented in such a way that 
I don't think you have to be an early educator Absolutely to not. sort of pick some positive stuff up from it. It's very practically written and particularly the, the and, and that was purposeful and particularly the first chapter chapter is all about children's emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. So that applies to parents, to educators, to anyone across the board in terms of putting those uh, very fundamental foundations in place. <laughs> Okay, it, it is called A Suitcase Full of Stories and uh, it's from Avril McMonagall and uh, she's the founder and CEO of Mosaic Digital Solutions for Early Education and author, as I say, of this book. Um, it is available on Amazon uh, for those in early education, but I think, as I say, uh, anyone with children or an interest in their children um, would get a better understanding of, of how we can speak to them and bring them on yes. and, and, and what have you. Or, or even, you know, take it to... You know, those who, who look care for your children yes. and say, this is interesting, actually, if you've seen this. Right, it's on Amazon. You can just search it and away you go, yeah? Yeah, that's All it. All right, Avril, it's lovely having you on. I would love to actually have that conversation um, uh, 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 in, in regards to what you're talking at that yes. event this morning or tomorrow? It's this tomorrow, tomorrow between morning. two and four. Okay, tomorrow afternoon. But for now, Avril, thanks very much. Great to see you again. Thank you. Thanks a million. The Nine Till Noon Show with Letterkenny Credit Union. Now offering mortgages from €40,000 to €600,000 with no hidden fees or transaction charges. Letterkenny Credit Union, 9102127. Did you know Tinny's Toys stock top toy brands like the Care Bears, VTech, Leapfrog, Lamaze, Playmobil, Tonka and much more. We also have a massive range of outdoor toys like swings, slides, swing ball, goal posts and rebounders. And don't forget, we're still Ireland's largest farm toy superstore. Open Monday to Saturday, Leck Road, Letterkenny or online at tinnystoys.com. Hello, I'm David Foley, Medical Herbalist. Are you suffering with a cold, flu or sinusitis? Then ask for Irish Botanica Echinacea. A traditional herbal remedy, Irish Botanica Echinacea is your natural solution to relieve the symptoms of the common cold, flu and sinusitis. Call into the Natural Way, Letterkenny Shopping Centre for more information. Peppa Pig is back in Derry in her oinktastic brand new live show. Peppa Pig's Fun Day Out. Join your favourites for some fabulous adventures and enjoy all the fun, giggles and snorts. Don't miss it on the 15th and 16th of May. Book now at millenniumforum.co.uk Visit Inishon Co-op Home Build Show at Inishon Gateway Hotel, Bonkrana on Saturday, April 13th, 11 to 5pm. Meet the suppliers for expert advice and all your home build needs. MICA supports available on the day. See Facebook for details. At Century Cinemas, we have a selection of event cinema coming up this April with live shows of the Royal Valley, Macmillan Celebrated and Swan Lake. Also, the Met Opera La Rondine by Puccini. To make the event even more luxurious, we will be showing it in our premiere screens. To book your tickets, visit our website at centurycinemas.ie. Only three days left until the big home makeover draw in association with Foyan Company. If you're in, you could completely transform your home with a €10,000 home makeover plus €5,000 in cash, all in association with Foyan Company. Check out highlandradio.com to purchase your tickets and we could be calling you this Friday afternoon on Around the Northwest. Entries close at midday on Friday the 12th of April. Highland Radio weather updates with McElhenney's. Support local at McElhenney's. With 53 years experience in fashion, beauty and home, we're here for you. Plus, enjoy M-Card rewards when you shop in-store at McElhenney's Bally Buffet. OK, so today we'll bring a good deal of dry weather with some spells of sunshine, a few showers, breezy with a moderate to fresh northwesterly wind, which will ease later. Highest temperatures of 8 to 11, 8 to 11 degrees. The county's number one talk show, the nine till noon show on Highland Radio. Okay, it is 11 o'clock. Time to get a news update, and it's over to Donna Marie Doherty. Thanks, Greg. Good morning. Leo Radker has bowed out of the Taoiseach's office for the final time, saying it's been the most fulfilling and rewarding time of his life. Simon Harris will be elected as his successor in the Dáil later this morning. In a farewell speech, the outgoing Taoiseach said he never had any doubt that Mr Harris would reach the top job one day. 
Two men have been hospitalised after a two-car collision in Malin this morning. The crash occurred shortly before 7am at Umgall. Gardaí say the road is expected to remain closed for a number of hours and diversions are in place. Gardaí are appealing for information after a van stolen in Letterkenny was later found burnt out. The white Peugeot partner van with a partial registration number of NX62 was stolen from Rosemount Terrace between April 1st and 2nd. It was later located at Kirkstown, completely destroyed by fire. A man is due in court today in connection with an early morning burglary at a business premises in Letterkenny. The property at Kelly Laston was broken into this morning. The man was arrested at the scene and later charged. Gardaí are appealing for information after a jeep was damaged in Caronaf in Moville. The vehicle in question was parked at a business premises from 3pm on Sunday the 31st of March until 9am the following Tuesday. The front windscreen was cracked and the driver's side window was smashed. However, entry was not gained nor was anything stolen. Those who witnessed any suspicious activity is asked to contact Gardaí in Bunkrana. And finally, the Donegal branch of the Irish Hotels Federation has a new chair. Ashleen Arnold, General Manager of Arnold's Hotel in Dunfanaghy, has been elected to the position replacing Paul Diver. She previously worked as a chartered accountant, has acted as a consultant for clients of the local enterprise office in Donegal and a number of other private businesses. That's all for now. We'll be back again with all the latest at 12. Thank you very much indeed, Donna Marie. And uh, we'll be back with more on the Nine Till Noon show after we take this break. The 9 Till Noon Show is brought to you by Letterkenny Credit Union. Offering low-rate car loans with fast approval. Apply online at letterkennycu.ie or in office today. Are you ready for Cairn Community Games? Come and make some noise. Throw shapes, run, paint, cycle, sing. Take to the stage and make friends. It doesn't matter where you're from or what you're into. There's a place for you at Cairn Community Games. Because together, we're all in. Play your part at cairncommunitygames.ie Craving a taste of bliss by the water? The Water's Edge in Rathmullen. Join us from 10am to 12pm daily and sample our delicious new breakfast menu. We also have a daily lunch special from 12pm. Or why not sample our dinner menu from 4pm? The Water's Edge Rathmullen, where tranquility and good food come together. Don't miss the BAFTA award-winning comedian Michael McIntyre's brand new show, Magnificent, at the SSC Arena Belfast on Friday the 31st of May 2024. As always, Highland Radio make it easy for you as we look after all your needs. We will provide luxury transfers, overnight stay at the Clayton Hotel Belfast on a and b basis, your ticket to the show, shopping time in Belfast City Centre. For more information, go to the outlet at highlandradio.com or give us a call on 074 91 25000. Michael McIntyre in Belfast. As a woman, you know your body better than anyone. But when you're looking for answers, Irish Life Health gives you access to GPs who are specialists in female health to guide you in areas like menstrual health, contraception, fertility and menopause. Our female health benefit is available on all hospital plans, like our first cover plan from just €41.92 Euro per month. Join today. Search Irish Life Female Health. Terms and conditions apply. Irish Life Health DAC is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. We're joined on the programme now by Rael Tan Nilanen, who is uh, talking to us about uh, a horrendous uh, experience that she went through recently, or that's how I, I would uh, see it anyway. Rael Tan, good morning to you. Hi, how are you? Good morning. Uh, okay, right. What happened to you whilst travelling from... Uh, Dublin Airport to uh, Donegal Airport? Well, um, I had a mastectomy. I had breast cancer 15 years ago and a mastectomy. And since then, I've been wearing um, what I affectionately call my bean mag. It's a prosthesis. And um, I've never had any problems anywhere going through security at any gates. Um, And I've been to Amsterdam, Glasgow, London... You know, good few places. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just coming up to St. Patrick's Day, I was going up to Garda Hork for a special night for Lilith Lira, who's um, he's just retired as a professor down in Galway. And um, I was coming through the gate and I was stopped because what happens now is they have these new big body scanners and you stand in front of them, you put your hands out. 
and it flashes up a big orange triangle and it goes, danger, danger. Well, Robinson, there's something here we need to investigate mm. with me. Um, most times, and I've been, as I said, I've been to Glasgow, I've been through Heathrow, you you get a quick pat down and that's it. Thank you very much, Ben, and away on. But at this particular stage, she, the, the security officer stood in front of me and went, what is it? This is showing up. Uh, I went, yeah, that's my breast prosthesis. And she went, I have to see it. And I looked at her, because <laughs> we're starting. This was Patty's weekend. Mm. Come on, the whole world, this mother was there, you know. Um, so I stood there, and to be honest, I think I mentioned um, on uh, somewhere else, I was like a rabbit in the headlights, sort of, you are. Mm. And I said, I just so I repeated, it is a breast prosthesis. And she went, I have to see it. So I ended up trying to put my hand down the front of my top and in. And do you know what? You get special bras to put these things in so they don't don't move all over the world and fall out in the middle of of, of Tesco. Um, I had to hook around to try and get it out because it's awkward. Yeah. And halfway through getting it out, I think that's when she suddenly realised. Mm, this not, might not be the best idea. Mm-hmm. This is okay. That's grand. Where you go? So I walked through, and again, still going, what just happened? And I was actually sitting into the plane, to be honest, before it really hit me what had happened. And you know yourself. Now, I have to say here, there was a bit in um, one of the national newspapers, and I, went, I was crying on the airplane. Mm-hmm. Yes, I was, but you know how short that airplane is. Yeah, you're no sooner up than you're down. That is not the point, and I am not here to be a victim. I'm here to say, really, to be honest, um, be ready, um, be ready to tell them. Okay, give me privacy. Okay, well, and, 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 and it's, let's it's, go. It's, let's do it. It's you know? your experience, and, and of course, it's up to you to frame it whichever way you like. But I think there are people listening that will feel you, you, you were a victim. I mean, this dependent on how uh, each individual. I mean, this is really offensive and hurtful and dehumanising. It's so many different things yeah. uh, dependent on how the person feels it, obviously. Uh, but to have to, to be, yeah. I don't know, how, how how did it make you feel having, and, and, and the public the public nature of it as well, and, and just the, I don't know, how did it make you feel? It's the it's public nature of it, actually. It was, a, it was the nature of sort of um, asking me, basically, to start hooking around in my underwear in mm-hmm. the middle of the airport with, with all these people running around. Um, and I, I, I'm not a victim, but I was victimised. Yeah. Um, and it, it, I think she started realising how, how humiliating it was, sort of, as she started to see the the processes start to come out, you know. Um, and that's... But, I mean, the irony is as well, there were about three or four guys on the gate with her. And none of them intervened to say, you know... Oh, sorry. Um, maybe this could be handled another way, yeah. or you know. Mm-hmm. And I must admit, on the way back through Carrick Finn, there's only, as you know yourself, probably mm-hmm. there's one gate, there's one body scanner, um, and it's this new body scanner. So I said to the guy standing on the other side before I went through, I tell you what, this is going to be, and this is what it is. Mm-hmm. And. He couldn't have been nicer. Yeah. Oh, oh, jeepers. Oh, absolutely. Not a bother. Which is exactly what they were like in Glasgow as well. And you were London, tre- he, he, treated you like you know. a, he treated you like a person. You weren't treated like a person. Oh, yeah. In, in yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was just... Uh, and, um, and ju- no. Um, I was treated like... So, I, was, I was treated like, like to be honest, like um, I was already in the prison system for being a drug mule yeah. between Dublin and Donegal. In terms of... Uh, I mean, even if the was it said to you at any point? Uh, look, I understand this might be sensitive. We do have a, a an area that I can take you to uh, where you can show me. So at least it would be you and one under one other individual rather that's, than this. That's what should have happened. Hmm. Yes, but woulda, shoulda, coulda. No, that's what should have happened. Okay. But um, I just like to say, I mean, I did actually write in. I wrote in a complaint on the day and I got a holding reply of, oh, we're terribly sorry this happened. And they did say, we're terribly sorry this happened. We'll investigate. 
So I waited and then they came back with, well, we are, we'd like to repeat, we're terribly sorry this happened. But, and when you see the but, um, but, um, we'd just like to repeat that for security reasons, blah, de, blah, de, blah, de, blah. But I, I have since written back to them and this is where I sort of decided to sort of move it up a notch and bring it out into the public sphere. They did not say this is explicitly and in clear language what should happen when you go through one of these body mm-hmm. scanners. Step one, step two, step three. And I think that's what needs to be done. A protocol. In the same way as when in the same way as when we're travelling, you get something coming up on your screen when you're checking in or whenever to say scissors this, you know, um, sharp objects, Mm -hmm. aerosols, whatever, there should be some kind of, in case of prostheses, please note A, B, C. And if this... And I want to see that happen. Yeah, and I think you're right too, because there has to be a better way. Because if, if that person who insisted, at least for a time being, for you to remove your prosthesis... It then yeah. would have had to have gone in a train through the scanner because she couldn't have made an, a visual assessment on that. So if, if there is no proper policy no. or no information, presumably that would you would have to place that into a tray, uh, uh, go through a scanner and retrieve it. Otherwise, there would be no point uh, in her seeing it because she couldn't fully determine actually what it was. Um, and also, too, I think what's so important about you speaking out is that this is almost designed that you don't speak out about it because not everyone would be comfortable yeah. doing so. And there could be 500 individuals that have gone through this separately and not said anything about it because yeah. it's so horrendous to them and they don't want to speak publicly. Um, go ahead. Or, or, go and, ahead there, uh, and there are, and there are, um, and, yeah, and, and, and there are several people because while I was waiting for the plane, I actually put into um, a forum for breast cancer survivors. Okay. I said, look, this has just happened to me. Um, has this happened to anyone else? And I did hear not exactly the same thing, mm. but similar things where they were, where women were made to feel um, uncomfortable mm-hmm. and singled out. And mm. that, to be honest, that's not on. I mean, I, I think I've already said in some other places, I'm 15 years down the line. Mm. I, uh, you know, I, 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 I never think about it at this stage. It's an intrinsic part of my life, and I get just get on with the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. But to have this brought up like that, um, if I was six months out of surgery, you know, and a lot more of a shrinking violet than I am, mm-hmm. I think they would. You know, I, I don't know. I, I, my heart goes out to women who are just still trying to get come yeah. to terms with the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And as well as that, are probably still in treatment. They're probably, taken, probably still taking hormone inhibitors and, mm-hmm. you know, and they might, might be in radiotherapy. You never know, you know, yourself. So there are people who are a lot nearer to the original treatment period. Yes, than me. of course. And this would be happening to them. And look, that that flight, uh, those flights, the, the the cancer flights, obviously, where people uh, from Donegal yes. get access to cancer services in, in Dublin. So there is that Which built-in is traffic. And yes. I just wonder, are are we going to hear other cases of people feeling uh, embarrassed or humiliated? I, I don't know. I, I can't think of an example, but you know, maybe stoma bags or whatever it might be that people are having to demonstrate publicly there, uh, one thing or another. I don't know exactly what might trigger these scanners, but I'm sure there are other examples and we we can't treat people subhuman. They have to be treated with respect and dignity and unfortunately we hear too many stories like this where they're not. And often it is buses, airlines, things like that. Um, Ralton, thank you very much for for, um, speaking out uh, with us as well because I think it's really important that everyone uh, hears this and especially uh, our airports hear it because there has to be a policy and you should have at the very least, if they insist on doing so, they should... The first thing should be we have a a private space for you or something along those lines at the very least. And just just a note, just a note about the Carrick Finn. I've, I've used Carrick Finn quite a lot in the last few years. And I've never experienced anything except pleasure and joy.
And on that note, thank you very much, Relton. I really do appreciate you speaking to us. Um, if you have any similar experiences or anything along those lines that you feel we should highlight, please let us know. You know the contact details, don't you? 0866 25000 whatsapps and texts the caller says i normally don't say this but i hope she puts in one heck of a claim and if she hasn't if she hasn't done it to do so if she doesn't want to keep it donate it to charity what happened there is a bloody disgrace uh, they say for people like that with prosthesis etc they should have a medical cert that the scanner might go off like a pacemaker airport staff do have to be careful and they would lose their jobs if she was carrying drugs but listen it is possible there has been a case where someone has smuggled something in a prosthesis i mean so but there has to be a process or something that 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 something can't be exploited but people can't uh, be made feel like that as well right okay we are going to take a short break and then we're going to be talking about a, a special presentation at century cinemas letter kenny it's on the issue of uh, endometriosis which it's great it's been spoken about uh, far more now than it would have been in the past we're going to be joined by uh, two guests on that after these. The county's number one talk show, The Nine Till Noon Show on Highland Radio. The Nine Till Noon Show with Letterkenny Credit Union. Simplify your debts with a debt consolidation loan from Letterkenny Credit Union. Call us on 074 9102126 or apply online via our app or in office today. Go full Lidl with exclusive Lidl Plus Super Savers. Board B approved diced Irish chicken fillets were $5.49, now $4.39. Tossing some cherry vine tomatoes, now 51% off at $1.39. And wine of the week, Portuguese Albarino, was $9.99, now $7.69. Scan the Lidl Plus app and go full Lidl today. Get the facts for drinkaware, visit drinkaware.e. Hi, Paddy here at Shane Connolly Cars in Donegal Town. Are you looking to upgrade your car? With Shane Connolly Cars, you'll find mix and models for every budget. Great finance options and we also accept trade-ins. Check out shaneconnellycars.com or call into us at Shane Connolly Cars from Lonnerher Road, Donegal Town. Eclipse Cinemas in Lifford, Straban and Bundoran was honoured with the title of Best Family Entertainment Venue at the Highland Radio Customer Service Awards. Here are some of the reasons why. The Director's Lounge is brilliant. Homemade popcorn in a class of its own. The pizzas are amazing. The staff are friendly and helpful. I enjoyed having my hot food delivered to my seat. It's just a really class cinema. Treat yourself to a night out at Eclipse Cinemas in Lifford, Straban and Bondoran. Er fod na heiden ta meidad lektoch is kliste ag nis mu na hien pwynt se milion tsaar fedim agus gnoen is. Agus ta ESB Networks fose kur meidad kliste iti chantid le siil glan lektoch a chur er fall da rini. Kiandar bon tosh si atale da veidad kliste na ven nan fall amach kevid lektoch is a usad in tu gach la. Is kum a kinsolari lektoch is a ta ad. Teichig ESB Networks panka e chun chlor er lina in yuv. ESB Networks, when you have a seal. FBD doesn't stand for frightening rad dentists. Ferociously beating drums. Or feline business directors. FBD stands for support. We support business owners in Ireland with tailor-made services from personally assigned advisors. Visit your local branch to talk to your FBD insurance team. FBD Insurance. Support. It's what we do. Underwritten by FBD Insurance PLC. FBD Insurance Group Limited. Trading as FBD Insurance is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Now, on the 29th of April at 7.30pm in Century Cinemas, Letter Kenny, a powerful documentary on endometriosis called Below the Belt will be screened. Uh, and afterwards, there will be a discussion which aims to provide women of all ages in Donegal the knowledge and awareness necessary to navigate a diagnosis of endometriosis. And even maybe we can talk about how you go about... Uh, getting uh, that diagnosis can be a challenge in and of itself. Kathleen King's awareness advocate for endometriosis and joins us on the program now. Good morning, uh, Kathleen. Thanks for your time today. Good morning, Greg. Thanks for having us on. And uh, we're also joined by Cheryl Jane Rock, who's executive producer of the documentary. Good morning to you, uh, Cheryl Jane. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. I'll just make a quick correction. I'm not executive producer. I'm just promoting the, the film. Thanks, though. Can I call you executive promoter? At least, at least we'll be half right. Uh, no, uh, it's a very uh, valuable role as well. My apologies. It's just what's written in front of me, Cheryl. Um, 
Kathleen, how did this come about uh, in, in terms of, were you approached um, to sort of help with the source material or did you uh, seek out someone who might be interested in make a, making an, a docu documentary on this important topic? Yeah, so the director of the documentary is a lady called Shannon Cohen, um, who also lives with endometriosis, and she has a filmmaking and a law background. Um, she first produced a documentary in 2016 called End of What, um, which had its Irish premiere in Letterkenny. And we had a fantastic response to that. And, you know, as, you know, the community in Ireland, like worldwide, we helped crowdfund that. That allowed then Below the Belt to be launched a couple of years back. Um, we held an Irish premiere back in 2022, but it's such a powerful documentary. And while we're hoping to get this to broadcast, it really is so important that people see it. So um, Cheryl and myself have decided to bring this to Donegal ahead of that so that people can take the education from it, people can take the impact from it and, you know, all of the education that comes with that. Um, I would work very closely with Shannon in terms of, you know, awareness and different advocacy events worldwide, but it's such a powerful story. It, it needs to be told. And it is told through four people. Is that correct? It is, yeah, for, for at least four stories within that film and we see the progression um, and the impact that it has on these individuals right through from not being believed, given inappropriate treatments and diagnosis and also like the financial side of it, having to travel for surgery, um, all things that we see reflected here in the Irish community. I've spoken to too many uh, women that have struggled to get the diagnosis, uh, as you've just outlined yourself, to the point where it's all in their head or it's this or it's that um and the the common theme is eventually they just you know have to self-advocate they do their own research and they say this is what i have now you you know you have to do what you have to do yeah it is it's terrible and and you know i suppose 25 years on from my diagnosis we're still seeing the same fight i'm still seeing people being faced with the same challenges that i faced and um, the average delay to diagnosis in ireland is nine years um, but i've recently spoken to a woman who was first diagnosed in her 50s and that's not uncommon you know i will come across women like that quite frequently i think first of all we don't believe women we don't believe that their symptoms are quite severe but equally, we find that women don't necessarily know that something's wrong because we've been led to believe that maybe, you know, pain around the time of periods, maybe painful sex, painful bowel movements, pain emptying your bladder. We don't necessarily know that these things are abnormal. So we have a huge gap in education. And again, not just in Ireland, but worldwide that we need to address. But Cheryl Jane, we are making some progress in that more people now than I think, you know, I don't know how to timeline it five or ten years ago, understand or have uh, some knowledge of endometriosis and how it can affect people. And I'm not talking about those that, that have it. I'm on about just general society. And it also talks to, unfortunately, another issue that comes up on this show time and time again, problems with the health system, with health care that continually seem to disproportionately affect women. Yeah, there, there is so much more work to do, really. I mean, I can only speak, I mean, I'm not a medical professional or an, an academic. I can only speak from personal experience. And as a patient, I was misdiagnosed even last year. So it took me maybe till late of last year to get diagnosed fully. So the experience of that alone is quite frustrating. And the understanding of endometriosis in Ireland still is that it's a woman's disease and it's not. It's systemic. It has a systemic fallout. Um, and it's been found in every organ in the body. So to address that, there's research that's just necessary. Are things catching up, though, in terms of our understanding of it? You know, outdated opinions and what have you. Is the, 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 the broader public conversation hopefully addressing some of those historical issues? Well, historically, it's, I mean, the name itself, endometriosis, it's very misleading. It means, endo means within mitra, uterus, and osis disease. And actually, it doesn't have anything to do with the uterus itself. So that's very confusing for the medical community and, and the society as well. Um, but we are catching up in terms of having conversations about it. There's a lot of younger people who booked into the film, which I'm very excited to have them as an audience. They're more comfortable talking about their bodies. Um, but yeah, we're, we're getting there, but there's just so much work that needs to be done. I mean, I'm somebody now who's been diagnosed late and that's not a nice, not a comfortable experience. No, and there are consequences for that as well. Um, I think it's almost half of infertility cases uh, are due to endometriosis. So it's, I was going to say it's not just the, and <laughs> thank God I corrected myself, but, you know, some of the things we, you know, about the frustration of diagnosis, the pain, uh, that not being believed, 
the late diagnosis has really quite serious ramifications, life-changing ramifications for people. Absolutely. And a lot of that's a very personal story as well. And I think what's a really important message for women is to listen to other women as well, because it's kind of like what Kathleen was saying, that we don't know, we're, when we're told, like we're telling each other, oh, I have that, that's normal, then we're kind of normalizing what's patho essentially pathology. So it's very important that women are having conversations with each other, believing each other and promoting women's health as well. What needs to change, though, going forward, Kathleen? Because, you know, documentaries like this are incredibly important and we can talk about awareness all day and we can talk about how we hope things might change. But fundamentally, and I suppose it's in the health system and maybe it starts at the GP practice, what, or, or, what needs to change? Is it an understanding of what age this can affect people? Is it making sure that people are correctly signposted to either identify or rule out endometriosis? Because I don't want to spend the next 10, 20, 15 years talking about how we're talking about it. How are we going to sort it out? Yeah, it comes from a multifaceted approach, really the best way to change this. And we're starting off with education in schools. Um, I launched a pilot program in Donegal called MISHA, which is going to help educate the younger generation to recognise the symptoms. The second prong on that then is healthcare professional and public education. And it's very important to think that when you go to a GP with symptoms as vague as maybe fatigue and pain on urination or, you know, pain around the time of menstruation, it can be very difficult for a GP to recognise those symptoms. So we need to train the GPs and healthcare professionals to look for the red flags. So look for things like painful sex, look for things, pain where the person is unable to attend something as important as a family wedding or an exam or something like that. There are things that you can help to differentiate. And then third of all, we look at the government's plan where they have put in an endometriosis framework last year. Now, unfortunately, there was not enough patient consultation in this. Um, and the regional and super regional centres that have been set up, unfortunately, have left out the West and Northwest area. So there's a lot of work to do in that. And we still don't have the access expertise in Ireland, you know, to be able to provide multidisciplinary care, excision surgeon, and to cope with the amount of women. We're talking about 200,000 women in this country um, living with endometriosis in all its shapes and forms. So we've a lot to do. Yeah, it's estimated mm -hmm. one in nine women are affected. Uh, there's going to be a level of under-reporting here and, and, and a lag, I suppose, in, in counting people given the decades it can take or the decades sorry almost it can take for a, a full diagnosis uh, we can presume is it that it's a, a greater figure than one in nine yeah if you look at some populations and particularly those presenting with infertility it can be as low as, as one in five like um i think we need a non-invasive um diagnostic um, method to be able to diagnose endometriosis quicker and I'm delighted to say there is some research going on on that including some Irish research which is going to contribute um, to reducing the delay from nine years hopefully down to three months and um, we're a few years off that device going to market but again to that would be a revolutionary change and get people that diagnosis and treatment earlier. Mm. And Cheryl Jane this isn't it just about endometriosis is it I mean this is you know, uh, I think every woman affected or not, and when I say every woman, I mean every one actually, because we, you, you know, it it it, it affects it affects all of us one way or other. Um, that this is about actually more more broadly to a conversation about healthcare for all women. I believe that definitely. Yeah, I think you know we can all say is, you know, healthcare. It's not you can't say women are more important than men. Of course not. But biologically, we have time frame. That's just science. Mm. And I think it's important that we do prioritise women's health care. And essentially, it's, you know, we're there to reproduce, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, OK. So the, the showing of this documentary is on Monday, the 29th of April. Uh, it's at 7.30pm. It's in Century Cinema Letter, Kenny. How do people go about sort of uh, getting their tickets? Uh, and talk to me a little bit then about the, the post-show conversation. Cheryl. Jane. So uh, you can, uh, we have a link on Ticket Taylor. I'll have to admit the tickets are flying out that shows the appetite for the conversation itself. Um, so um, they can contact me on Instagram as well, Cheryl uh, Rock, but Ticket Taylor should um, lead them directly to the link. And, and in terms of the post-show discussion, we just want to start the curiosity of women uh, with women and also to start, you know, to um, encourage self-advocacy it was the first thing someone's told me whenever i was diagnosed they said you know you need to self-advocate and i was like what does that mean what is that and you feel like you're being pushy that you feel like you know you're asking a bit too much you feel like a hypochondriac but then whenever the you know the facts show you realize then and you kind of have to look back at maybe 20 years of being misdiagnosed and that's a difficult experience yeah um 
Kathleen, a caller says her daughter has been referred for hysterectomy. They think she has endometriosis. She's passing out with pain. Is there any other test she can get done for a diagnosis? Not a horrendous situation to be in. Yeah, it is. It's, it, it's a bad situation. Unfortunately, a laparoscopy is the only way to diagnose endometriosis, but I would advise that caller to seek a second opinion. A hysterectomy is not a treatment for endometriosis. It doesn't remove the disease. And the disease, by its very nature, is outside of the uterus um, and usually on the pelvic organs. So again, try and seek somebody who's experienced with endometriosis and you know maybe speak to somebody within the community as well who could help signpost. Can I just uh, correct myself here? Um, I just have read hysterectomy so often I went through. It's a histo, hysteroscopy. I beg your pardon. Hysteroscopy. Here, yeah. yeah. Hysteroscopy. Okay. Yeah. Hysteroscopy cannot diagnose endometriosis. A hysteroscopy, hysteroscopy uh, looks inside the uterus itself and looks at the endometrial okay. lining, which again is different. All right. Okay. Sorry about that. Well, Zach, Greg, it's, it's, it's also important to state that very often hysterectomy is, um, you know, yeah. the go-to for... So it was a Freudian slip, but it was not a million miles out either, sadly. A million miles away. (laughs) Yeah, with endometriosis, do you have rapid weight loss, typically? I wish... (laughs) If um, if somebody's experiencing symptoms such as nausea or bowel discomfort, it may mean that they have, you know, they're not eating as well or eating less. But typically the disease is not, not associated with either weight loss or weight gain. But normally the symptoms around that, so maybe the bowel symptoms or the, you know, the eating patterns from living with pain can affect that. Okay. Listen, both of you, thank you very much uh, indeed. I, I really do appreciate you coming on. Unless there's anything that either of you feel we need to add just whilst we're in this space, um, or are you happy enough? Yeah, no, thank you very okay. much for helping Kathleen. us promote this. And again, if people have questions, they can reach out to either myself or Cheryl on Instagram. It's the easiest place to find us. Okay, um, thank you very much indeed. Kathleen King, Awareness Advocate for Endometriosis. It's good having you on the show. And also Cheryl Jane Rock, who is uh, a promoter for uh, this event, uh, which is on the 29th of April at 7.30pm in the Century Cinema Letter Kenny. It's uh, Float for Below the Belt, a powerful documentary on endometriosis. Thanks so much. Um, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. Very All much. right, take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Uh, Cheryl Jane Rock there. 86 60 is your WhatsApp and text number if you uh, want any further comments on that. Um, obviously... <laughs> I, I mean, maybe I, I'm out of touch here, but I've, a lot's been happening yesterday and today politically. For me, it just, I don't really, it, 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 maybe I should give it more importance than I am. We're going to talk about it tomorrow, of course. Uh, but just to keep you updated for those who are really uh, into the politics, um, what it seems to be now the case, uh, this is informed speculation, i.e. leaks and what have you, it hasn't been formally confirmed, but Helen McEntee is expected to stay in justice. Peter Burke has been widely um, speculated to be moved up to Enterprise. That seems likely to happen. Hildegard Nocton to remain uh, to go to higher education. Sorry, Patrick O'Donovan uh, to be chief whip. As I say, that is not confirmed, uh, but that's broadly expected to be the case. Uh, opposition, opposition TDs, by the way, whilst we've been on air, have called a vote on the scheduling of today's business. They're unhappy that the government is transitioning jobs internally rather than calling a general election uh, outright. So that means the schedule for the rest of the day will be pushed back as they were discussing that side of things. Watch the show live now on YouTube, Facebook and at highlandradio.com. The 9 Till Noon Show is brought to you by Letterkenny Credit Union. Digital loans now available. Apply online or via our app today and get your loan transferred directly to your current account. Are you tired of waiting for treatment or surgery? Did you know you can receive immediate treatment across the border under the new NI planned healthcare scheme at potentially no cost? Donegal patients are still being treated with us at Kingsbridge Private Hospital Northwest post Brexit. The process is easy and our dedicated team will help guide you through it. So why wait? Contact us today to find out how you can skip the waiting lists and receive treatment in Northern Ireland. Visit kingsbridgeprivatehospital.com because life matters. It's the Right Price Tiles and Wood Flooring biggest ever sale. Up to 50% off everything in store. All tiles, all wood flooring, all outdoor slabs, cladding and bathware. Everything slashed in price. This sale is not to be missed. The Right Price Tiles and Wood Flooring biggest ever half price sale is now on. 
Here at Tesco Mobile, we've gone and opened a new phone shop in Letterkenny High. A great wee spot now for a few good deals. Like saving €320 Euro when you buy the iPhone 13 for €129.99 Euro on our €35 Euro plan high. So why not stop in and say hi, uh, hello, to Tesco Mobile High. This is Supermarket Mobile. Applies to new bill pay customers on our €35 Euro per month plan. 24-month contract offer ends 1st of May 2024. T's and apply. See tescomobile.ie. Visit Inishon Co-op Home Build Show at Inishon Gateway Hotel, Bonkrana on Saturday, April 13th, 11 to 5pm. Meet the suppliers for expert advice and all your home build needs. MICA supports available on the day. See Facebook for details. The CFC Interior Stock Disposal Sale is now on. Due to renovations, an incredible £1.5 million worth of stock must go. Don't miss our highest ever discount on selected ranges across all departments. The Stock Disposal Sale at CFC Interiors Derry, Cookstown and Abbey Centre. Sale now on. Have you discovered the Donegal Boardwalk Resort Restaurant yet? Open every Wednesday to Sunday. Take leisurely strolls along the boardwalk and treat yourself to light bites, hearty lunches or comforting dinners. Complete your stay in our cosy lodges. Explore more at DonegalBoardwalkResort.ie Unwind, dine and savour the moment at Donegal Boardwalk Resort Carrigart. Child-to-parent violence is often described as the secret side of domestic abuse because parents who experience it struggle uh, so much to talk about it or even admit that it is happening. Aileen Hickey is CEO of Parentline and is with me on the programme now, uh, with us in fact. Aileen, thanks for your time today and good morning to you. Good morning, Greg. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Right. So in, in terms of contacts to Parentline, are we seeing any trend in uh, the reporting of child-to-parent violence? Uh, we're seeing a, a very significant trends. So first of all, I suppose rather than calling child to parent violence or um, adolescent to parent violence, as it often is termed as well, rather than calling it the secret side, it's often more so the unspoken side mm. of domestic violence or domestic abuse. Because I think most people, when they think of domestic violence or domestic abuse, think of it very much in a partner to partner setting. Um, but obviously domestic violence or domestic abuse is any sort of abuse or violence that takes place in the domestic setting. So child to parent violence or adolescent to parent violence very much falls within that category. So um, over the last four years, we've seen about a 500% increase in, first of all, in the demand for the supports that we have for child to parent violence. Uh, last year, uh, we, we took about 6,000, we took 6,147 calls last year to Parentline, which made 2023 a record year for Parentline in the first place. But one in three of those calls uh, referred to elements of child to parent violence. Now, I will say, Greg, I think, you know, because of the word violence, a lot of people, when they think of child, to, when they think of any sort of domestic violence, or when they think of child to parent violence, might think, you know, that it's some kind of 15 year old young fella kind of throwing his mother up against the fridge door every night of the week. And it can be. But it's not always. Mm -hmm. So we would have calls from parents who can have a very significant injuries and um, are very traumatised and they may have bruising or a broken bone or whatever. But it, it, it isn't just physical violence. As I say, it can be, but it isn't just physical violence. It's also verbal abuse, emotional abuse, uh, damage to property, um, coercive behaviours, controlling behaviours. So there's a number of um, elements to child to parent violence. I think the only the, the thing that needs to be remembered is that the crux of it is that it is any violence that leaves a parent afraid or in fear of their child in their own home, and that is essentially what child to parent violence is. And just you know, again, not, not to keep over talking, but you know, really, I, I think what what the, the the worst part of child to parent violence, and every part of it is bad, is that it definitely leaves a stigma um, for the parent and a sense of shame and a sense of silence because. It's very difficult for a parent to acknowledge that this sort of behaviour is going on in their own home and with their own child mm -hmm. because, you know, this is their beautiful child and they never expected, you know, th these behaviours to be suddenly directed at them. It's difficult, difficult to acknowledge, but more and more people are. And when you see such a, 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 a rapid increase, 500% increase in demand over such a short period of time, you have to ask the question, are we seeing more of this? Uh, is it because more people are living at home now uh, or living at home for longer? Is it that people are becoming more aware that Parentline can offer supports in this regard and it's the 
you know, maybe the path of least resistance for them in terms before going to the Guardi or whatever. I mean, have, what is your analysis of, of, of why we've seen such a, a rapid increase in a relatively short period of time? Well, I think you've touched on actually a number of the elements. I, I think it's a combination of things. So I think certainly, um, you know, parents are probably more willing to talk about it because we've pushed the envelope, not, not just Parent Line, but other organisations um, in terms of trying to open the door to a discussion on this and to try and to destigmatize it and to, you know, to get parents to open up a bit about it. So we've certainly raised the profile um, of Parent Line and the awareness of child to parent violence. Um, but, you know, I mean, look, you can't put everything at the door of COVID. Um, but I think certainly, you know, the first year that we experienced the spike in calls in relation to child parent violence and um, the spike in demand for, for the programme that we have to, to support that was during the first COVID year in 2020. Um, and we saw the, the demand go out the door at that stage. That would have been because, I suppose, you know, families became kind of hot pots. You know, everyone was living or working from home or going to school from home. And, you know, the, it, it, it certainly was quite incendiary in a lot of environments. That there is another thing, which is also that, you know, the housing crisis, I suppose, has also kind of driven a bit of this because when we talk about child to parent violence, it's children primarily aged from 12 or 13, or they, they can be a bit younger, uh, right through to adult children. Uh, you know, because adult children are still they're still your child, and now there are so many adult children who, because of um, the housing crisis and because of financial um, restrictions, are living in the family home. And it causes a huge difficulty for parents. And actually, 17% of our calls last year were from parents in relation to their adult children. So it's a very significant issue as well. As I say, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, it, it, it has been caused by a number of factors, but I suppose, suppose primarily that, you know, the housing crisis and the difficulty of getting accommodation and being able to afford accommodation. So I think it's all that, but I think so, also maybe parents are a bit more willing to look for support. Yeah. Um, so I'm not saying that it wasn't always there, because I, you know, I, I you know, I mean, it, it may have increased, but I think maybe it's a, it's an increased awareness. But as also, well. Aileen, what's happening too when we talk about child to parent abuse is that there are people listening to the show today that maybe think it's normal, maybe just put up and shut up, and they're actually saying, actually, I'm a victim of this. So you know, the awareness I think actually sort of makes people realise that you know that's their life they're living, which they shouldn't. What are the, like, if you, someone contacts Parentline or, or some other group that uh, offers support in this area, um, I don't want any trouble for them. You know, I just want a resolution to this. I don't want the guards involved or whatever it might be. And every case is yeah. different. Are there interventions or things that you can suggest that, that can try and uh, address the issues before it is escalated or elevated? First of all, 100%. And uh, second of all, I suppose what we will always say is, you know, the sooner you you, you ask for help, you know, the, the better you will feel. And it's okay. It's okay to ask for help because, you know, this isn't a behaviour that you need to accept in your own home. So we have a very specific programme called the Nonviolent Resistance Programme. Now, we're not the only organisation that has this programme. Uh, a number of other organisations, CAMS would have it and uh, TUSA would have it and Bernard. There are a number of agencies and organisations would have it. I suppose where Parentine comes into its own is that we are one of the few if not the only organization that um has such an amount of non-violence resistance trained practitioners because it's a very specific training program that our volunteers have to do in order to do the program uh we now have 33 volunteers who are trained in this specific program and also because the added bonus is that we do it over the phone with parents so it takes out the logistical difficulties of coming to meet somebody it also adds to the confidentiality of parents who are looking for the service because again you know they, they're not always willing to, to to meet somebody face to face or in a group setting um or whatever so then in in short first of all i would say that if anyone is, is dealing with this issue in their own house the best thing to do would be to go and look at the parent line website we've got a huge amount of information on the parent line website on child to parent violence and on the non-violent resistance program and there's testimonials on the website in relation to parents who have been through the programme and they speak about their experience prior to do the programme and a lot of them were in very drastic circumstances and they were very distressed and a lot of them didn't believe the programme would work for them but it, you know it, they also then describe how they went through the programme and how it worked from, mm -hmm. from the back end for them uh, essentially you know we, we, I, I, you know it, it's an eight to ten week programme so I'm not going to be able to explain it in, in three no, minutes but that, essentially yeah. it's a it's, it's a non-blaming intervention programme but what it essentially does Greg is it sets about um, changing 
the reaction of the parent to the behaviours that are being exhibited or displayed against them. Because I think most children know exactly what buttons to press and exactly what reaction they're going to get when they press a particular button. And often it's like throwing oil onto a fire. Mm. But if you change the parent's reaction or change how the parent engages with that behaviour, that in turn brings about a behavioural change in the child. Now, obviously, it's not as simplistic as that. And unfortunately, for many parents, they would love us to be able to post them a magic bean or to wave our magic wand to to resolve what's going on. It doesn't work like that. But for parents who do this programme with us, as I say, on a one-to-one basis over the phone, is is a fantastic program as long as they commit to doing what's being suggested to them on the program. Okay. I mean, you know, it, 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 it changes family dynamics and family outcomes right going forward. Brilliant stuff. Okay, Aileen, thank you so much for your time. Aileen Hickey, CEO of Parentline, and and the uh, website address, Aileen, is Parentline.ie. Is it? Okay, thank you very much indeed. I'll double check that. Uh, we just got cut off there just at the very last. Okay, uh, again, if that's an, an issue that affects you or you want to share your story, uh, I know it's very uh, difficult, very sensitive. I, I did have uh, quite a long back and forward communication on this issue with someone on, on social media going back some time, and thankfully the situation was resolved, but the person in question in, in terrible, desperate situation, and there was a violent element to uh, their situation as well. Um, but... Um, my last communication indicated that they did uh, address the issues and felt safer in their homes. Okay, we'll be back with more after these. The 9 Till Noon Show is brought to you by Letterkenny Credit Union with monster loans available up to €60,000 for all occasions. Visit letterkennycu.ie. New this week in Home Store and more. All mattress protectors are all half price. But better hurry, because when all our half price mattress protectors are gone, they're gone. Also, all outdoor heating and all ironing boards are still all half price. But when all the half price outdoor heating and all the half price ironing boards are gone, they're definitely gone. Drop by your local home store and more, or visit us online at homestoreandmore.ie. New store now open in Frascati Centre, Black Rock. Home store and more. A happy home. Tee off your Masters Week with unbeatable savings at McGurk's Golf Letterkenny. From the 8th of April to the 15th of April, swing by our store and score big. For every €100 Euro spent, you'll receive a €10 Euro McGurk's Golf voucher. Take advantage of this limited offer during Masters Week. Visit McGurk's Golf, located at Letterkenny Retail Park, your go-to destination for top-quality golf equipment and at unbelievable prices. Get everything you need for delicious breakfast, lunches and dinners at Dunn Stores. First, you'll save in the aisles when you fill your trolley with everyday low prices on the products you buy the most. Then you'll save again at the till with our 10 or 50 grocery vouchers. Get a trolley worth 50 euro for just 40 euro. Double savers from Dunn Stores. Always better value. Terms and conditions apply. Voucher can be used to next grocery shop for 50 euro or more. Party Box Legends of County Mayo. Three Box Left is packed with satire, comedy and poignant reflections. Catch Three Box Left, one of Ireland's favourite comedy shows at Villa Rose Ball Buffet on April 18th, the Waterside Arts Theatre Derry on April 19th and on Greenland Theatre Letterkenny on May 3rd. See venues for ticket information. Is the appearance of your staff important to your business? It's the first point of contact for customers when entering your premises. At CM Embroidery in Letterkenny, they have a huge range of clothing covering all areas of the workplace. It's widely known that customers warm to and trust employees that present themselves well. Have your company name embroidered or printed on all your work uniforms. Contact CM Embroidery on 07491 28097 and get your staff looking their best. Highland Radio weather updates brought to you by McElhenney's. Support a local Donegal business with McElhenney's. From fashion to home essentials, find everything you need for any occasion. Shop McElhenney's Bally Buffet for quality you can trust. Today we'll bring a good deal of dry weather and some spells of sunshine and a few showers. Breezy with a moderate to fresh northwesterly wind, which will ease later. Highest temperatures of 8 to 11 degrees. I've been told that a lorry and car collided at the Pole Star roundabout. It's down to one lane heading out of the town. Of course, traffic now from all areas affected as people are jumping lights, says one listener, and blocking the roundabout. 
A caller says, as far as I'm aware, security at DAA is privatised. This shouldn't have happened. A room should have been made available for inspection. The security person should have been reprimanded by her supervisors. We got in contact with DAA uh, on this issue to see if they had a spokesperson available, uh, but they don't. And they issued the following statement. Uh, we are very sorry that our passenger had a negative experience when travelling through Dublin Airport recently. A full investigation into the incident was carried out by the team and concluded that the situation should have been handled better. All passengers in such situations can request a private screening, which is then facilitated by a trained member of staff. Regrettably, this did not happen on the day in question. We offer a full apology to the passenger and can ensure, can ensure or assure that Steps have been taken to ensure a similar situation is avoided in the future, which is encouraging. Now, we can't rely on passengers to know that you can request a private screening, but they do say that they are putting steps in place to ensure a similar situation is avoided into the future. As Ireland's international airport, Dublin Airport welcomes passengers from all walks of life on a daily basis, and we pride ourselves on offering high levels of customer service to all, while also adhering to the extremely strict security requirements that ensure the safety of our passengers and staff. The team will be back in touch with the listener presently, and we look forward to welcoming her back to Dublin Airport soon when we can assure her of a much more positive experience. So it is... Um, it is a, a response. Let's see. Actions will speak louder than words. Hi, my daughter has to have uh, ambulatory gynaecology. Is this to investigate endometriosis? She's passing out with endometriosis pain. I've got to help her. I'm not... Obviously, the, the ladies that would know that aren't with me at the moment. Um, I disagree with Avril McMonagall when she says salaries for teachers in that space is low. It's actually one of the highest in Europe and in comparison to our colleagues in Northern Ireland, we're also better off. Northern Ireland get two months paid holiday in the summer. We get three. So that's in the early years. Uh, that's what one listener says there. I pulled up to a rural self-service petrol pumps um, and a middle-aged lady approached an elderly lady who was filling up her car. The, the lady looked very uncomfortable and got into the car and drove off. She didn't approach me as I had my husband in the car. I drove off and this lady was still at the petrol pumps. So I'm not sure if she was looking to extort people or not, but that's uh, one person's experience. So Charlie McConnell is to be now Blaney's Director of Elections in his run for a Euro seat. Must be a match made in heaven for Radio Fianna Fáil, which I presume that's what they're calling us. Would it not suit the Inishon TD better to help his mica-stricken constituents rather than spend his time helping his party colleague in a forlorn attempt to gain a seat in Brussels? Charity begins at home. Charlie, remember that at the local elections count. Well, it would be the uh, doll elections, but I'll take your point. Um... People driving carelessly on roads have got away for far too long. They'll always get money for fines. There's people going to jail for less crimes. Authorities need to wake up Mary. The one thing, uh, I mean, there is a, a, a catastrophic loss of life on our roads, um, north and south, uh, by the way. Um, uh, what I don't understand is the approach to it. I'm not, you know, too much policing and all that kind of stuff and extra laws, uh, you know, people have their reservations on that. But why do we target driving safety, like, for a weekend at a time? I mean, that is the biggest suggestion that the resources are crap that there could be. So you get one weekend where the speed vans are out, the guards are out, the checking tax insurance, the checking tyres, and it's all done in a, a big weekend. Surely that should be the case all of the time because what happens is, is you say, all right, it's not this weekend, I'll just drive how I like. I don't, but that's how some people might think. So I think the fact that they have to do these, throw the resources at it, and you still don't see many about, if the truth be told, the odd speed van in here and there. I've never been stopped once on a on a, one of these high awareness weekends. But it points to the fact that for the rest of the year, obviously there's a serious gap if that is what a targeted, uh, a targeted approach to road safety is. I watched up front with Katie Cannon last night on RD regarding integration. When we go on holidays, we have to show our passport to get on the plane, yet hundreds of people in Dublin or land in Dublin with no documentation. The question is, if 200 people are scanned onto a plane, say in Spain, and 198 are scanned through immigration in Dublin, why can't the two people that have lost their passports en route not be picked out? Well, you see, I think the problem is, is or the situation is, is, some people might not see it as a problem, is that once they get off the plane 
uh, once they get off the plane, they can claim, um, can they not claim uh, asylum at that point? And then international laws kick in. Uh, I was on a flight quite some time ago and they were checking passports as you come off the plane. You know the, the you know the tunnel the the tunnel that goes between the plane and the now if that were to uh, refuse entry before people actually physically get off the plane I'm not really quite sure. Coming up on Ours to Protect, it is a Tuesday, so Ours to Protect is on during John's show. Time's running out to get yourself registered for the Climate Action Hero Challenge. Donna Marie Doherty speaks to Hans Zomer, CEO of the Global Action Plan Ireland. So tune in at 12.30 uh, today on Around the Northwest to learn more there. Um, I want to mention, <clears throat> by the way, because there's a few short days, uh, the €10,000 home makeover <clears throat> is uh, coming to a conclusion on Friday on John's show. Uh, so I'm asking you, have you entered the €10,000 home makeover draw? It's an association with Foy & Company. On Friday, the 12th of April, we'll be calling one lucky winner live around the North West. Now, see the calling live? It, your ticket will come out and you win. So you, you can buy your ticket. You're not gonna, you don't have to receive a call to win, OK? Um, so you uh, your ticket comes out, you win. So what would you do with your 10 grand around your house, inside or out? And not only that, right, we're also giving away €5,000 in cash. So if you want to be involved in that, the most you have to pay for a ticket is €10. Euro. One ticket, €10. Euro. Six tickets for 50 10 for 80 It's just a draw, by the way, so you don't have to answer your phone. It's nice if you do, and we can have a chat. Brilliant, but that's not a prerequisite you can buy your tickets, you're thrown in the draw drum. It's as simple as that. I'll show those watching the draw drum. There it is. Look, full of tickets. Well, it's not full of tickets. Uh, you have a really good chance of winning compared to some of the competitions you might enter in terms of the amount that have entered. Uh, so if you want to buy a ticket, go on our website, highlandradio.com. It's €10 Euro if you have that and you want to have a punt. Uh, if you want to buy tickets for other people and yourself, 6 for €50 Euro, so they get cheaper, uh, 10 for €80. Euro. And um, the draw's on Friday. Someone's going to win a €10,000 makeover package plus five grand in cash. It's a draw, so all it has to happen is your number comes out of the draw drum and you've won, whether you answer the phone or not. That's not part of this at all at all. Right, that's where we have to leave it on the show. Michaela Clark's around the northwest. My mistake, she's not. She's just hanging around the studio. John Breslin is around the northwest. That's coming up after 12. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. We will be back with you tomorrow morning from 9.